heart of LA, Valley Sports West, the heart of the fan. Night six to three, but today another day. We're going to give you a Shohei Otani update you don't want to miss. Reed Detmers on the bump. What's the game plan for Det against the O's? And we got some champs in the house. That's right, the champs are in the house. The Little League World Series championship team from El Segundo is here. That was such a blast talking to these kids and the coaches. Mark Gubas of Bobby Valentine, a wealth of knowledge on the set. Then there's me, Patrick O'Neill. Gooby, what was it like to talk to some of these kids and the coaches? I mean, this is the excitement level they still had. I mean, this is, you know, a little bit ago now, but they still feel like they're living that dream. I mean, why wake up? This is keep oh. enjoying that dream right now. Coaching staff was outstanding. The kids really enjoyed themselves. They had a blast meeting Mike Trout. They said the atmosphere here at the Big A has been unbelievable, something they will always, always remember. Yeah, and what was it like for you, Bobby, being a Little League star yourself? Uh, Gooby's uh, wasn't allowed to participate. He was too big. Reason. Probably too big to play Little League. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. <laughs> you know, I was coming in the gate with all the team, and it was spectacular. And Jim Palmer was coming in, and I brought Jim over. I said, hey, guys, here's a Hall of Fame pitcher, Jim Palmer. And they looked up at him and thought that maybe he wanted their autograph. <laughs> no. You know, so it's really cool to be 12. 12 and be a star. Uh, we're going to talk to them in the third segment. They're going to join you and Wayne up in the booth during the game. Lewis Lappy, that is a hero. Uh, so, okay, the, the big news. We, we know, this is what we know. Shohei Otani is not in tonight's lineup. But maybe there's some good news we can report. We sure hope so. Let's bring in Carlin Bath. Carlin, what were you able to find out about Shohei? Well, just following up on the Little League chat real quick, Patrick. They are big. They are right behind me. My goodness. Congrats to the champs there. And, yeah, going back to Shohei, the positive news here. He is not starting in tonight's lineup. Phil Nevin followed up with us after the game last night and did tell us all that he knew, which was that he was a little bit sore. They still needed to evaluate him, so that's what they did today. The evaluations will continue, but we spoke with Angel Skipper Phil Nevin earlier today in the dugout about how Shohei is feeling, so let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, reported today feeling a lot better than he did yesterday when he left. Uh, <clears throat> but we're still going through some evaluation stuff with him. I'm uh, not going to play, not going to start the game tonight. Are you anticipating any time on the IL or roster moves or anything? We're, we're just still evaluating it right now. So that's just, that's all I can tell you. Might not sound like a lot there, but the fact that no roster moves being made or anything like that, that is a positive sign. Phil also let us know that Shohei really wanted to play tonight. So he could possibly be available to pinch hit, whether Phil choose, chooses to use him or not is to be determined, of course. And as you saw on the internet, Patrick, uh, Shohei, Angels PR told me, you know, he did have a stand-in for the team photo today. They had to find somebody very tall in the front office. Name not to be discussed, but that was roaming around the internet as well. And, and Angels PR told me that is a very common thing. You know, it's not just because of Shohei getting evaluated. That doesn't mean anything bad. But just wanted to let you know that, yes, there was a stand-in. That is confirmed. Yeah, then that happens quite a bit, though. Yes. You know, that's, so that's nothing unusual there, nothing to read into that. Carlin, thank you very much, and we appreciate that. I think it certainly is very, very good news. Bobby, I'll start with you. You know, when we were talking post postgame, I said I was going to say a prayer last night. I was sick to my stomach thinking, man, it, it, so many injuries this year. If Shohei's lost, and to hear that maybe he's going to be okay, uh, you know, and be able to play, that's just tremendous. More injuries to good players than any team, maybe in the history of the game. But to think of that Shohei can play and to think of the card that Phil has to use to bluff the other team, even if he can't play tonight, put him out on deck, say that he's going to pitch it, make sure that they keep the left-hander in to pitch the jury or one of the right-handers. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting situation. And Phil and Shohei will play it close to the vest. Okay. I, I just think it's great because Shohei said he wanted to play today. And that, that has to make you feel good as a baseball fan. What he's done this season is historic. The numbers he's put up on the mound, at the plate, on the bases, phenomenal, phenomenal player. 
and he wants to play. So I, I firmly believe that you'll see him playing here real soon. Yeah, I mean, it is tremendous news to hear that, for sure. We need him, and all these fans that show up, it's unbelievable, thousands and thousands of fans. So disappointed to not see him, and so that is great. I can't wait to see him back in the lineup, hopefully. Tonight's lineup, let's take a look against a very good Baltimore Orioles team. We know that, and Adley Rutschman is back in. Uh, but here's the batting order for the Angels. Sean Will, he's reached base in 13 straight games. Drury just hit his 20th home run, and the American League Player of the Week, Luis Renjifo. Moose, Ohapi, Moniak, Grichik, Escobar, and Kyron Paris. This looks like a lineup that can give the opposing team, the Baltimore Orioles, some fits here tonight and make things interesting. It's going to be up to that man, Reed Detmers. And, and Gooby, I'm going to start with you on Detmers. That fastball slider, is that yep. going to be an important factor for that I, a game I, plan? I think Patrick and Bobby, I think he has to start with his fastball in the lower part of the strike zone. Yes, he can get some swing and misses upstairs. He got 62 strikeouts with that fastball overall this season. But downstairs will set up that slider in that same plane. He's throwing his fastball 94, 95, but with some the lower third of the strike zone, you're going to see a lot of hitters go up and expand the strike zone and chase pitches like that with his slider, which has really good depth, especially when he's not overthrown. And so fastball's down, slider's down, elevate when you need to. And if he's able to do that today, I think he's going to have a really good game against Baltimore here today. They got a good lineup. They are deep one through nine. But this stuff plays against any lineup there is in baseball. You remember the one that long ago, he took a no-hitter in the eighth inning and down against Texas, which was another dominating lineup. So I, some, I expect something special here today from Reed Detmers. Uh, Bobby, what can Detmers perhaps learn from what we saw from Rosenberg last night against this lineup? Well, you know, like Mark says, uh, Reed has great stuff, but it's not about what he has. But it's about when he throws it and when he uses it. Last night, you saw that, uh, you know, with no one on, this team likes to turn and burn and tries to pull. But when they get situations, it's a really good situational hitting team. They had first and third last night with a big gap on the right side. Boom, they use it. They get an RBI and they create another situation. Then you see a veteran player coming over from the Yankees. Same thing, the change up away. He's just going to poke it out into right field for another RBI and create a second and third situation. You have to use your stuff when the, the game calls for it. And hopefully he learned from last night and learned from his past experience. It's just not throwing good pitches, but it's about pitching with good pitches. And I think you're exactly right on that, Bobby, because when you look at the last three games or so for Baltimore, they've had innings of seven hits and five innings, hits in an inning, and most of those hits are just going with the pitch the other way. So they will situate a hit against you. They will make contact. So you got to pitch to that contact and have your defense set up in the right way. But you also know that Reed Debra is a guy that can get a lot of swing and misses with the stuff he has. So I think it's going to be fun here to see how this is, works out today. I really feel something special from Brett Reed tonight. Oh, good. I'm glad you do. Then now I do as well. Yeah. For Me too. That's three of us. Uh, Kenny Rosenberg's an easy guy to root for. And, and for him, you know, that start last night, that's the first time in his big league career, you know, that he hasn't been shuttled back to the minors between big league appearances. He was able to get Get ready for that start and prepare for it. Let's find out how he felt. He did. Long third inning, right, where they scored the three runs. Um, but, you know, the first two and the last three um, that kind of bookended that. Um, felt like I had a really good rhythm. Hop did a really good job of uh, working with me and um, pushing the right buttons. Um, I normally say putting down the right fingers, but, um, yeah, you know, um, it's what I do, you know, and it feels good to do that on a on a major league mound and get an opportunity to start the game. Like the confidence, that's what I do. Now, and Gooby, let me ask you, uh, for Rosenberg, you know, still Seth's about to get healthy. He's not going anywhere, though. He could be a long relief guy and help out. Yeah, I think he did a real nice job. He showed enough fastballs. It wasn't overpowering, but he spots it well at 91-92. The big thing for me, his changeup, we know how good that changeup is. So he's got that changeup fading away against the right-handed batter, but he threw enough curveballs inside to open up that outer part of the play. And we know he's got a very good pickoff, but he feels his position well. He's not going to give away those extra out. He's not going to give those extra bases because he shuts down a running game so well. So he did all the things. You know what? I like his energy his personality has fun on that mound he's out there competing and that changeup is really good hey patrick you know what i like it mark is that he went six innings these guys have been struggling to go to six innings these other left-handers who've been in the rotation all year long take notice he did it top it 
All right, there you go. That's competition, and we'll see if Reed Detmers can. Mark already said it's going to happen. We feel something special here tonight. But we know about Baltimore. It was the three-run home run. Figures the Baltimore Orioles would hit a three-run home run, and that was the key to the game. Gunnar Henderson, without a doubt, the favorite for AL Rookie of the Year. They got some thunder. How do you contain it? More on that next. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Rally Studios. Brooke Fletcher here alongside Joshua Perry. JP for the Chiefs. Travis Kelsey, he injured his knee. If he isn't good to go on Thursday, is Patrick Mahomes going to struggle in the passing game? I don't know if they're going to struggle, but it's definitely going to be harder for them. One thing the Chiefs has done is they've created guys, basically, at wide receiver, so I think they'll figure it out. But you can't beat that chemistry between him and Kelsey. All right, we're going to talk more topics like this right here on the Rally. You can catch it Wednesday on your local Valley Sports Network. We'll see you then. games and coverage all day every day your way on MLB Network Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort. From the first pitch. Let's go to the ballpark. To live look-ins. And post-game reactions. Tell us how this one feels. That's how this team covers every team on MLB Tonight. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Packing all today's biggest plays into one lightning-fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. Valley Sports, and it is brought to you by your Southern California Lexus dealers. Experience amazing. The righty, D. Kramer on the bump for the O's. Look at the best records in the American League. Baltimore at 86 and 51. They've got the second lowest payroll in all of baseball. They got a lot of young players that are developing. They, they've drafted well. They lost more than 100 games three years in a row, over 500 last year. And, and Bobby Valentine and Mark Gubiza, they have. They've risen to the, the top of the yeah. heap. It, it's amazing how good they have been. And a lot of the young players are going out there perform. Elliot Rutschman has really been the key. When you look back, before he got there, 258 games, they were 91 and 167. Since that point, 258, they are 152 and 106. That difference he has made, that leadership behind the plate and what he's done at the plate. So they have some young players, but they have some pretty good leaders, even with the younger guys on the team. Yeah, and that Adley Rushman, the on-base percentage for a catcher, Bobby, is it's one of the highest. You go back to 1946, highest of all time. Yeah, and that's why he's up in the lineup. He gets on base. He also could punish the ball and hit it over the fence. He's really made, been a difference maker. And you know, at the beginning of the season, when we saw Lowe, Logan O'Hoppy in an Angel uniform. He was the guy that many people uh, compared him to. It would have been nice to see him play the entire season next year. That will happen. But he hits the ball all, all over the field. He calls a good game. And leadership is on his resume. He makes it happen. Henderson, uh, on, on the same note, is probably uh, a Rookie of the Year candidate, not the Rookie Keep of the going. Year playing shortstop. I thought Zach Net Neto and Henderson we're going to be the one two guys to look for as the young shortstops Zach didn't get the chance to play all year but Henderson did and has put up big numbers and I think he's leading right now in most people's opinion to be the American League rookie of the year yeah 52 extra base hits nine stolen bases slugging 482 and he's an outstanding defender at third base too a strong throwing arm he does everything really really well I mean he stays on pitch as well he sets up pitchers and he's got that good power. Remember early in the season, he was struggling with breaking balls. He's not struggling with breaking balls anymore. He's still hitting his fastballs, but he's on top of those secondary pitches. He, he made a play. It was a, just a foul, just barely foul. That was that Brooks Robinson like in the World Series in 71 <laughs> against Lee May. That was like great.
great of a play. He made, he made three of them, huh? Yes. Brooksy, yeah. Yeah, so, all right, Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, and, and Gooby, the starting pitcher, is, is Dean Kramer. What, what's it going to take? What, Cosmo? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, the thing is, he's really transformed. He throws a lot of fastballs between his two-seam, four-seam, and cut fastball, but his secondary pitches have gotten a lot better, and he will challenge you with his fastball. He will give up some home runs with his fastballs, too. The combination between his two-seam, four-seam, and cut fastball, he's allowed 22 home runs with those pitches, but he will mix and match there throughout the game with all his different pitches. His changeup has turned around to be really, really good. Same thing with his curveball. He's not throwing his sweeper as much, but his curveball and changeup have been pretty good. And I think the good news is, Patrick, that last night the off-speed pitches were hit by the Angel hitters, so I think they can go up there tonight, look for that hard stop, and try to turn it around. Yeah, I mean, he's around 71 to 73 percent fastball usage between the two, four team and cut fastball. So you got to look at those zones, try to be able to drive it, work it down. He's very, very effective with his four seamer upstairs. And when he's up there and he gets chases, he's going to have a difficult task to be able to give up some runs against. But bring it down. And he, like I said, he gives up a lot of home runs, 26 of them on the season, 22 versus his fastball. I I'm predicting Nolan Shonawell goes deep because some of the kids saw him hitting uh, some homers in BP and they were predicting that was going to happen. Wow, way to go. Uh, I have also heard, real quick, that uh, for Dean Kramer, sometimes he could be his own worst enemy, and then it's Kramer versus Kramer, and that's all you can... That's all we can really hope for. I think no? so. Way to go, Pat. Okay. I like one. it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> all right, Gooby. Have a great call, pal. Thanks I got to go after that one. That was a good one, Patty. <laughs> Our Gooby's on the call with Rain Randazzo. When we come back, El Segundo, Little League World Series champions. They will join us. They've already said this is the best experience they've had so far since coming back right here at the Big A. That's next. Stay there. Moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning every night on MLB.tv. can't tomorrow. Do I got that right, Danny? Yeah, you know, that's a special motto that we uh, used for three years and just makes these kids work a lot harder, work better. Harder and better is a different world, you know. So, yeah, they followed it. They play as a family. They compete. And fight. 
fight, no. fight with resiliency, and uh, that's a recipe for success no matter what sport you're playing. Yeah, these kids have already said this. This experience at the Big A is better almost than they've experienced since coming back. Is that right, guys, right here at Age State? Is the what do you think? What, what they have really taken care of business here for you. The Angels have been fantastic. If, if some of these kids weren't Angels fans, they've all t told me today they were now. And uh, from the entrance to the, underneath the dugout to the food to the suites, man, top shelf. Angels, top shelf. Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, uh, Dan, you know, I know the kids don't care what you know, but they know that you care and that you've been with them through this long ride. The number one time that you had with this group off the field. The number one time off the field uh, was probably the parade at Pennsylvania. That yes. parade was out of sight and it just shows you how much you mean to people that don't know who you are. They praised you, they loved you, and they asked all these kids for autographs. They don't get to do that often. I mean, they're not in the pros and they're not doing, so that to them was like, hey, this is what family does. Family sticks together and you see what happens uh, when that comes to part like that. Excellent. And did you slide down the hill? I didn't, yeah. but all these yeah. kids. Right. So hey, so the thing was, I said, if uh, you win, you can slide down the hill. Otherwise, I don't want you hurt for the games. Right, that's perfect. So we won, they did it. Uh, listen, I want to give a shout out to your coaches. We got uh, Tim Abrams and Eddie Lee back here. That these guys were so incredibly hard, right? I mean, these guys. By the way, Tim played uh, with Denny Hawking at El Camino. Yes, he Chico. did. Yeah. So, and you're a legend in Manhattan Beach, by uh, the way. I appreciate uh, that. But we have Crew O'Connor, by the way. I'm an apostrophe crew, so we gotta we gotta make that apostrophe live forever. You're the biggest Angels fan here is that true yeah me and Colby are, are the biggest is that right what do you like about the Angels uh they're the best all right the best all right you, you give me the scouting report on this Angels team right now in this season overall I know it's been tough I mean a lot of people are injured but uh, I think towards the end of the season we'll come back better and next season will be even better Awesome. Love it. Well, what's it been like for you guys going back to school and having to take tests after being heroes like that? Was that the hardest thing? Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I mean, it's going to be kind of annoying because I'm not used to it, but yeah. How about the autographs, dudes? Are you guys starting autographs at school? Uh, school, not really, but uh, we sound a lot in Williamsport. <laughs> How about you met the team? You met Mike Trout and uh, Carlos Estevez was signing. Actually, I think that uh, one of your players was signing. Was it all that you were signing for Carlos? Was that true? Oh, yeah. Carlos is my homie. He's so nice, and I'm just glad I got to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And who was trying to, uh, you were trying to trade some cleats, were you not? Yes, I was. My, uh, Any luck? Get up here to the mic. I was trying to trade my Air Forces for his cleats, same size, so. <laughs> size. Yours are too big. Size 13. <laughs> uh, so you got a big parade coming up, right, Danny, on the 10th? Yeah, I got a big parade the 10th. There's a, probably 70,000 people plus coming. Oh, Everyone's going to be there. Um, hopefully George Brett's going to come down if uh, he can get out of a wedding that he's supposed to be in <laughs> to the big, big uh, call for him. So we'll see. It should be nice. Uh, uh, we're still on cloud nine. I wish I could sleep on cloud nine. I'm exhausted, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't trade this for the world's priceless. I know three years of hard work, you guys. Congratulations. Really, thank you so much for being with us. We're so proud of you. Nice swing, by the way, Lewis. You guys are awesome. All of you. All of you. Absolute stars. Well done. Well done. That was fantastic. Yeah, appreciate you guys having us. Hey, don't forget that parade. El Segundo down Main Street on September 10th. Be there or be square. We'll come back. A milestone anniversary next. Hey kids, join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game on MLB Network. Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort. And it all starts right here with Harold and Adnan on MLB Tonight's first pitch. Who's ready for baseball? It's time for the first pitch. We're about 25 minutes from game time. I'm so excited. Our quick hitters right out of the gates. During the games, we take you to the games where you might see a lot. Greg, Greg, we have a potential walk-off at Wrigley. No way. What's going on? Oh, they've got a runner at third, and Nico Horner's up. Here's a pitch. Base hit. Nico rocks it up. Cubs win. Cubs win. Cubs win. And after the games, we're all about instant highlights and player reactions. Nico, congratulations. Your first career walk-off hit. How did that one feel? Oh, man, it's, it's as good as it gets. And an amazing crowd here tonight. Uh, Wrigley Field is a, is a very special place. We're feeling good right now, for sure. And that's how this team covers every team. All in a night's work on MLB Tonight.
Angels Live and all season long, the day after the Angels win at home, hopefully tomorrow. You fans can redeem free medium fries with a $1 minimum purchase at participating SoCal McDonald's. Download and register on the McDonald's app. And we're back here at the Big A, game two of three. As this homestand continues for the Halos, we flash back three years ago today, home run at number 300, an Angels record. Remember that three years ago with Tim Salmon right there, Mike Trout. It was very hot that day, and Mike Bacon history. How about some current milestones, Bobby B? Brandon Drury with his 20. Just the second Angel second baseman ever with 20-plus homers. Bobby Grinch doing it twice. Yeah, he's going to hit more than 20. He's swinging really well right now and driving in runs while he's at it. So Brandon Drury reaching 20. That is a great nugget right there. The second Angel second baseman to Gritchie. And Nolan Shotwell has reached base safely in 13 games to start his career. That's a nice piece of hitting. Yeah, and you mentioned that he's going to hit a home run tonight. Yep. It's because of hitting that change up to left field. They're going to come in on him with that cutter. Hopefully he's ready for it and wraps around the foul ball. Luis Ranifo has a career best 12 game hitting streak, which he's gone 21 for 47. By the way, AL player of the week just named today. Three home runs, three runs scored, seven RBIs. Marcus Timms has said he's He's hitting his pitch right now, not the pitcher's pitch. He's worked great together. Congratulations to Ren Hifo. Yeah, you have to give credit to the hitting coach. Of course, we want to give it to his teammates, but he's worked real hard, and he's a really good player. Oh, yeah, really happy for Luis. He's really locked in right now. Let's Listen, we, we mentioned off the top, Shohei Otani not starting tonight, but the news is not all terrible because he's not ruled out. He could possibly pinch hit. He wanted to play, so I think that's the best news of all, but getting down to business, Bobby, what's key to victory in your opinion? Well, I think they have to out-hit this team, and and it's not like the great, greatest offensive team. They put things together. I think the Angels need to put things together, score more runs. Obviously, you win. That's that's always a big key right there. I'm calling this guy for a home run, as the Little Leaguers did. Nolan Shonawell, he was mashing in BP. Denver's on the bump, and Wayne Randazzo, Mark Gubas, I have the call next. See you afterwards. Have fun, sis. Listen to live Black Afri audio from every major league club. And Aaron Judge with some thump. Stream video of minor league games. That's a go ahead grand slam. And watch the best baseball highlights and look ins on MLB Big Inning. The all new At Bat is your all in one live baseball subscription for only $3.99 per month. There she goes. Home run, Pete Alonso. Subscribe to At Bat within the MLB app today. Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort, and it all starts right here with MLB Tonight's first pitch. Let's go to the ballpark. It's a good chance to look around a little bit. A match between the best teams in the National League going head-to-head. -head. During the games, we take you to the games where you might see a live walk-off. Yes! And after the games, we want to hear from the players as bad as you do. First career walk-off hit. How did that one feel? Oh, man, it's, it's as good as it gets. And that's how this team covers every team on MLB Tonight. This is Chris Bryant, this is Christopher Russo, and this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Chris Bryant plays hard so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo, helping players play harder on MLB Network.
Sports West, the heart of the fan. tonight here at Angel Stadium for tonight's game. Two of this three-game series brought to you by Morongo and the Los Angeles Angels against the Baltimore Orioles. Alongside Mark Gubiza, I'm Wayne Rand. Dazzo, an update on Shohei Otani. He's not in the lineup tonight, but Phil Nevin did say before the game that Shohei is feeling better, so he's not going on the IL, at least not yet, and there remains hope that Shohei could be back to the Angels sooner than later, which is certainly good news, but for the Angels tonight, they're going to play on without Shohei in the lineup as they go for a win against Baltimore. Yeah, Wayne, it's always tough not having Shohei in it, but Brandon Drury has definitely picked up the slack, but he's done so far swinging the bat. This is second Angels, second baseman ever with 20 or more home runs in the season. Bobby Britz did it twice. Brandon Drury, his 20th home run last night, giving him now 44 extra base on the season. He's been solid defensively at second base, but that power he has shown, whether he's hitting the ball to center field, right center field in that baseball travel, 48 home runs in the last two seasons, 51 in his previous six. So he's getting that swing together. He went away from that launch angle. It's more of a line drive. Hits that ball the other way. Except to what I'm loving what I'm seeing with Brandon Drury. He gives you a tough at bat every single night, whether it's a fastball or a secondary pitch, and he's going to see some fastballs versus Kramer tonight. And that actually was the 200th home run hit by the Angels last night, the blast that gave Brandon Drury his 20th of the year. And tonight, let's try to hit some home runs for Reed Detmers as he goes up against the O's, a team that he's oh, not well against. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen to live Black Eyed Free audio from every major league club. And Aaron Judge with some thump. Stream video of minor league games. That's a go ahead grand slam. And watch the best baseball highlights and look ins on MLB Big Inning. The all new At Bat is your all in one live baseball subscription for only $3.99 per month. There she goes. Home run, Pete Alonso. Subscribe to At Bat within the MLB app today. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. I'd say this calls for celebration. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. Oh my goodness, what a play! Every game. Go! Every night. Swing and a miss! Every highlight that makes the headlines. Are you kidding me? We live today, preview tomorrow. This race in the NL Central is getting good. On Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. This is Mookie Betts, this is Christopher Russo, and this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo, helping players play harder on MLB Network. Imagine an entire channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen. And it's gone! With live look-ins to clutch at bats. A walk-off flare! And players on the edge of making history. This could be it! 62! It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike. From rookie middle infielders, first to his Kyron Paris in the first inning, robbing a base hit from Anthony Santander. And then later in the game, Jordan Wesper with a sliding over the shoulder catch. A great play from the Orioles' second baseman in the bottom of the ninth. We'll see what happens tonight, game two of this series. 
Get away with a great deal only at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Visit buyhyundai.com today. By the OC Healthcare Agency, build your healthiest self at angels.ocnavigator.org. And by your local Southern California Cadillac dealers. Gets from El Segundo Little League are here. The world champions from El Segundo. They won this year's Little League World Series. And we'll hear from a member of their team and their head coach a little bit later on up here in the booth. Meanwhile, Reed Detmers leads the Angels onto the field. Yeah, Reed Detmers, I'm looking for him to have a big game here tonight against a very deep lineup. We saw what they did as far as going with pitches the other way for Detmers, but some pretty decent numbers in his career with a 1-6-4 against the Baltimore Orioles. My go-to for Detmers to continue that success against Baltimore is that solid slider depth down in that zone, but it's all set up by the command of the fastball down. We know he can load the four-seamer upstairs, but that fastball down will set up his slider throughout the game. Baltimore Orioles can score runs. They have been one of the highest scoring teams on the road in the major leagues this year. And Adley Rutschman, who was not in the lineup yesterday, is today. Rutschman is the leadoff batter and the catcher for the Orioles. Mountcastle and Santander behind him. Gunnar Henderson had a big game last night with a three run homer and a double as the Orioles face Detmers today. And Brandon Hyde got his 300th career win as Orioles manager yesterday, joining just a select list of Orioles managers who have done that. And the defense behind Reed Deppers today brought to you by Easton and Easton. Luis Certain Hefo out getting his eighth start out in the outfield. In right field, player of the week, Luis Van Hefo, Moniak next to Gritchick in the outfield. Escobar, Paris, Drury, Sanuale over at first base. No hoppy behind the plate calling the pitches for Reed Detmers. Sean well, when you think about how good he is defensively over first base too, especially with the lefty on there, late swings you're seeing a lot from the right-handed batters going the other way. They did that against Rosenberg. Maybe going to play a little bit further off the bag to be able to take away those hits to the right field. Adley Rutschman leads off. He is a switch hitter. He bats right-handed to start the game against Detmers, who fires in a fastball strike. And we are underway at Angel Stadium. A little cloudy today. You know that upsets me when it, the clouds come out. I had the feeling you might be. There's a little drizzle here today for you too. Drizzle. I, I was I was hiding when that happened. <laughs> the ball's two strikes on Rutschman. <laughs> I just knew somehow you were going to talk about that today. A little clouds <laughs> here today. Well, as you know, I got spoiled in record time this year. I'm from Illinois, just like Reed Detmers, who is from Nicomis, Illinois. Hard hit on the ground. Backhand stop Escobar. Plants and throws a strike. Good throw from Escobar to get 
Richmond at first. Yeah, nice play there by Escobar on the backhand. A long, long throw across the diamond. Get that out. Rushman hits the ball pretty hard. I mean, you think about overall this season with 17 home runs, 23 doubles, and a triple. Very patient at the plate. Fell behind and ends up grounded out. Get that first out of the game. First pitch fouled off by Ryan Mountcastle, who had a base hit in the game yesterday that drove in a run. Also scored a couple of times last night as the Orioles one game one of this series six to three facing Detmer is the lefty tonight Mount Castle who has hit lefties well this year very well I should say has the Orioles first hit and our Hyundai key for the game today got to go a little smash mail today Stephen Harwell passed away just a couple days ago I am a believer you got to believe in your pitching staff and right here for Reed Detmer's got to believe in your stuff believe in your defense and you're going to score enough Runs to be able to pick up a W. So you got to be. I am a believer. And I'm a believer in Reed Detmers here today. Yeah, well, but uh, hey, now you're an All Star. Only well, after they win, he's an All Star. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing that was a changeup that Mount Castle hit. We're seeing a few more changeups thrown for Reed Detmers of late, and I think that's a quality pitch. He was out in front, Mount Castle, but he's able to fight that one through the hole. When you're hot like he is right now. You're going to hit the ball pretty hard on a consistent basis, even a quality pitch like he threw on a changeup. Santander, the batter now, the designated hitter for the Orioles. Swings through that fastball up in the zone. Mountcastle is the second highest OPS against left handed pitching in the American League. Only Chaz McCormick from the Astros has been better. Santander can give the ball a ride too. 26 homers this year, 33 a career high last year. Switch hitting DH tonight. He's played some in right field and at first base a little bit this year too, as he looks at a strike from Detmers. Early on, a lot of strikes thrown for Reed Detmers. Good to see that. Said nine double plays turned behind him this season. Not a high ground ball percentage, just 36.5%. One ball and two strikes on Santander. And he lifts this one toward left field. Randall Gritchick is in place. And that's the second out as Mountcastle returns to first. The batter will be Austin Hayes. And another batter out in front on an off speed pitch. A slow curveball from Detmers at 74. Austin Hayes is always a tough batter for left handed pitcher too. He's he's aggressive successful against lefties. Coming in hitting 354 slugging at 462 versus looks lefties. Looks at a strike from Reed Detmers. Hayes was an all star for the Orioles this year just like Steve Harwell and Smash Mouth encouraged you to be. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of All-Stars on the Orioles. That's what happens when you have a team that is now 35 games above 500 on pace to win over 100 games for the first time as a franchise since 1979. It's been a championship starved franchise after a lot of success for a lot of years. Two balls and a strike on Austin Hayes and you know, the Orioles in the 60s and 70s were one of the most successful teams in all of baseball. They won the World Series in 1983 and there's Jim Palmer one of the icons and aces in the history of the Orioles who is broadcasting on Masson tonight. 77 years old Jim Palmer he looks incredible. Yes. All time favorite. And he was a big part of all of those teams. That succeeded for the Baltimore Orioles during that time. That one year they had four pitchers in their staff win 20 games. Four 20 game winners on one staff. That was 1971 where they had the four 20 game winners. The Orioles were world champions in 1966, 1970, and 1983. But that 83 championship is the last time they were in the World Series. Well, you had to go there, didn't you, Wayne? You had just, to go there. I'm just telling a story. Just because yeah. they steamrolled the Philadelphia Phillies is not 
anything to do with the narrative that I'm displaying here for the, <laughs> it's, for the it's for our viewers. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Hayes rolls one to short. Kyron Paris flips to second. Now I got to run away from Gooby. <laughs> Create amazing work with Fiverr. All you need is your team and a talented freelancer who will lend a hand and seamlessly join your team from just about anywhere. Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. Welcome to the Aura Sleep Lab. <coughs> you need a bit more deep sleep. Getting enough high quality sleep increases immunity. Why? Because sleep helps fend off sickness. A good night's sleep boosts your number of infection fighting antibodies and cells. And with your Aura Ring, you can learn how to sleep deep and keep your immunity up. It's like having a sleep lab on your finger. Go to sleep with AuraRing.com. If we weren't proud of the craftsmanship and level of detail that go into every pair of Warby Parker glasses, well, we probably wouldn't show you how they're made, including this part, which is our favorite. Wow. And this is also great. Each pair comes standard with lenses that are scratch resistant, anti-reflective, and UV protective. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. We'll lead things off tonight. Luis Renifo named the American League Player of the Week as he comes in riding a long hitting streak. Renifo has had a hit now in 12 straight games, a career high. Richard Brandon Drury, the open Eve homer last night. So did Randall Gritchick batting in the seventh spot in the Angels lineup tonight as they take their swings against right hander Dean Kramer. Kramer fastball 91 97 is cutter. There's a curveball changeup slider. Go to's to have success against Kramer. Today is power his fastballs between the combination of two and four team and cut fastballs allowed 22 home runs on those pitches. And you got to drive the secondary pitches back up the middle. Got a real good changeup to go along with his curveball and sweeper. Nolan Shonowell has been on base in 13 consecutive games to start his major league career. That is the second longest streak in Angels history. Just two behind Darren Erstad's team record that he set in 1996. And the defense behind Kramer here today. Tell you what, Westbury made one of the best plays I've seen in a long time. That baseball over his shoulder into the outfield. There's solid defensive. Mateo Henderson, Mountcastle, Rutschman behind the plate. Hayes, McKenna, and Hicks in the outfield for the O's. But Westberg has been outstanding defensively at second for the O's. Really known for his offense. Shonowell cracks one foul. A great defensive play by Westberg, unlike Doug Eddings there, who just botched that carom off the sidewall. And somehow, some way, there's a few Angel fans are still pretty happy about that wasn't made. <laughs> oh, good guy. Many conversations with him, but still, Angel fans remember him well. El Segundo Little League here today. They they should get out there and give Doug Eddings some pointers. Got to get your butt down on the ground <laughs> balls. <laughs> I'll tell you what. They had an incredible thrill today, being out there, getting a chance to meet Mike Trout. All the players. Carlos Estevez was unbelievable with them today. Same thing with Mickey Moniak. A bunch of the guys came over and just had a lot of conversations with the champs. Thought we'd break out some queen. We are the champions for him. Shonowell serves one toward the gap in left center field. McKenna gets over though. Good jump. As he makes the catch, the ball kind of hung up a bit as Shonowell flies out. We'll have 
the head coach uh, Bell Segundo Danny Bole and Louis Lappy the hero from the Little League World Series coming up in a couple of innings. It's quite a moment for a 12 year old to have to hit a walk off home run to win a, a baseball championship of that caliber the Little League World Series broadcast internationally. That was great just talking to him. And he said, yeah, he knew he got it, too. I'm like, wow, what a moment that is for him. <laughs> oh. Was that cutter Kramer will throw? Wait, did you go to Williamsport when the team went a couple of years ago? No. Brandon Drury fouls one back. I mean, I, I, that would have been, been the coolest thing ever to be able to go to. Williams sport for that. Yeah, I was there. I was there know, four or five years ago. The Mets played there. It was awesome. What a cool experience seeing all the games in action. And the little leaguers had a big thrill with having the big leaguers there as they do every year. I know Bryce Harper was having a good time with the little leaguers at this year's Little League Classic. And the Phillies played the Nationals there. It would have been really cool, but we weren't able, we weren't traveling at that moment, but that would have been real cool to be able to go there. The guys all said they had a blast there in Williamsport. The Angels played in that game a couple of years ago as Drury strikes out. And that game is broadcast nationally anyway. Two up, two down here in the bottom of the first as Renhifo is due up. Player of the week, Luis Renhifo. Well, deservedly so. Luis Renjifo with a 12 game hitting streak. He's been the Angels' best hitter of late, batting 442 over his last 14 games. He was named American League Player of the Week today. Trey Turner, the National League Player of the Week. But in that week's time, Renjifo at 440 with three homers, seven RBIs. Led American Leaguers with 11 hits. Looks at a strike here from Kramer. An RBI in five of the six games that he played over the last week. So Renhifo deservedly the American League Player of the Week for the first time in his career. He drives this one out toward left center field. After it is Hayes going back toward the wall, and he makes the running catch running onto the warning track. Well, that ball was hit well. It almost felt like it were in left field in Baltimore. <laughs> With Home Chef, you're home free when you're craving a home cooked meal. Our oven ready meal kits are easy to make and even easier to love. When it comes to making dinner, fill in the blanks with Home Chef. Delicious, meat simple. Get 18 free meals when you sign up at homechef.com. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable? when it's half the cost for Fubo TV. Get all the channels you want on the only live TV streaming service rated number one in customer satisfaction by JD Power. Try free at FuboTV.com. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. With the Game Time app, I paid 60% less than this guy. What? And it's not just sports tickets, it's also concerts. Performances, too! Oh, come on! Download Game Time. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Gave this ball a ride. Our producer Max said it would have been a home run at Wrigley Field and City Field, the two places I've spent the most time in. So I thought it was gone. Had to cover 89 feet to run that one down for Hayes. 
used to have to cover a lot of ground out in left field at home at Camden Yards. Yeah. They eat a lot of room out there. Basically, you know, it, oh, they're almost underserved by having Mullins in center field as Henderson is thrown out at first. Reed Detmer is able to corral that ball eventually and throw out Gunnar Henderson. So one pitch, one out in the second, and here's Carlin Bay. Thank you, Wayne. Well, El Segundo Little League is in the house. They are the Little League World Series champs. You guys have heard us talking about it all night tonight, and they've been having quite the day at the Big A. Some highlights so far. They threw out the first pitch. They were honored in a pregame ceremony. Gooby was talking about their meet and greet with Mike Trout in the batting cages. They got to get up close and personal with some more players. Well, they watched batting practice and during BP, they had highlights. They had their game rerun play in that championship game up on the video boards. And Carlos Estevez, he really looks like a big kid just chatting with them. He actually watched their championship game, you guys, and he was really excited to talk with them about it. And the kids demanded if he comes out from the pen tonight, they want Carlos to point in their direction <laughs> right at them in their suites. But they've been having a blast tonight. I know they're going to be joining you guys shortly up there in the booth. That's cool. Michael Stefanik was playing rock, paper, scissors with him, too. I'm sure he lost on that one. They're the champs. <laughs> Jordan Westberg bats here with one out in the second. And the kids from El Segundo Little League getting the big league treatment tonight. And rightfully so. Really a tremendous job that they did on Williamsport. Huh? Stefanik won that round. That kid was in disbelief. He's done nothing but win his whole life. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Detmers gets his first strikeout tonight. He's done a nice job of pitching inside. That was a slider upstairs, but he also last inning fastball in on Hayes that got in on him. He's used his all speed pitches so far. That high slider tied him up. First punch out. Getting now 70 strikeouts with his slider this season. Aaron Hicks, the batter. Hicks, the former Yankee, was let go earlier this year. He's found a home with Baltimore, playing most days in their outfield. It's a good defensive outfield, and we talked about Hayes having to man all of that ground in left field at Camden Yards. Mullins, a gold glove caliber center fielder. Balls one strike on Hicks. Didn't look like Reed Detmer's real comfortable in that delivery of that curveball. Left it upstairs. And one before just a little bit off the plate down. That one he left way upstairs. Good changeup. Again, he's starting to utilize his changeup more and more. You see that type of swing against the changeup going just the opposite direction of his curveball and a slider. Perfect spot. Check swing there, and it's ball three. Followed up with another changeup, almost got a chase. He held up on that one. Now what does Eddings know? <laughs> Swing and a miss, strike three. Reed Detmers back to back strikeouts in a one, two, three inning. MLB Big Inning brings you the biggest plays of the night, live as they happen. Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. It's nonstop action on MLB Big Inning every night on MLB.tv.
plate with Matt Olson hitting a homer tonight. Now has 45 to take over the major league lead. Pete Alonso hit another one today. He has 42. Kyle Schwarber recently hit his 40th, even though he's hitting under 200. Schwarber could become the first player in major league history to bat under 200 and hit 40 or more home runs in a year. And we'll see if Shohei Otani gets back in the lineup relatively soon to stay in the mix for the major league lead in home runs one behind Matt Olson now and Shohei reportedly feeling a lot better today than he did yesterday with regard to his oblique tightness. So That's a great sign though when you hear that. Phil Nevin said that Shohei wanted to play today and the Angels kind of said oh, pump the brakes a little bit at least give yourself another day and they'll still need some time to evaluate and make sure Shohei is ready to go. It certainly is a good sign. Yeah. You just feel a little bit better today as, as compared to yesterday. So Shelley, the need and, and the want to get back out there so quickly. It's always great to see that and hear that from Shohei. Mustakas with a fly ball, right center field. Hicks is after it, so is McKenna. And McKenna calls for it at the last moment to make the catch. Hicks usually in center field uses the one that's calling for that baseball. Got out of the way at the last second. A very good outfielder himself. So one out brings up Logan Ohapi. So we're Zach Neto homer tonight in his first rehab game. For Triple A Salt Lake City, so Neto could be back fairly soon. Well, Hoppy's been back for a couple of weeks now. Well, valuable experience for oh, Hoppy to be around the ball club all year and learn what he needed to learn as a big league catcher. Although he certainly wanted to be out there, getting that playing experience. And now he'll be able to at least get that over the final month of the season. And learn that pitching staff well and their tendencies, what how they get him out of those spots where they're struggling just enough where you make the right call behind the plate or just have that quick conversation with your pitching staff. There's a drive to left from Ohapi. If it's fair, it is gone. That ball is foul. Boy, real close. You was hoping it just stayed on that line just a little bit longer. But Cutter just stayed upstairs and just hooks foul. Kramer's given up 26 home runs, bench of 22 versus fastballs. Well, that's a pretty nasty pitch. Sinker rated right the knees. Three balls, two strikes now in Ohapi. And right on the border of the strike zone. And Ohapi got the call and stays in the box. Now he drives one out toward left center field. Austin Hayes after this in the gap. It's over his head and off the base of the fence. Ohapi driving a couple of balls in that plate appearance. He has the Angels first hit tonight. It's a one out double. Yeah, that baseball was squared up a sinker down. You remember that pitch before was right on the outside corner at the knee. So he tracked those eyes down on that sinker and he was on top of that one and lines it off the wall. What about that 390 sign? Had some sound on it. So Hoppy's in scoring position now. Mickey Moniak will be the batter. 106 miles per hour off the bat. Great swing by Ohapi. Little cue shot toward third. Henderson looks Ohapi back. Almost took too long. He had to really fire it over to still get the out at first. And two down. The batter will be Grichuk. Mentioned Zach Neto. Well, a big hit in his rehab assignment today. Blasting the first pitch that he saw. Of his first at bat for a home run at Triple A. A beautiful day there, too. I mean, that was a fastball inside. He got that leg down, you know, that leg kick before he gets the two strikes, and he crushed it. Here's Gritchick, who has crushed Orioles pitching over the years. His homer last night, the 22nd home run. By the way, that looked like Lewis Lappy hitting that ball well. Lewis Lappy's a little bigger than Neto. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Rounded over third. Henderson will chuck it across and get the out to end the inning. We will hear from the Little League World Champions in just a moment. Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort. And it all starts right here with Harold and Adnan on MLB Tonight's first pitch. Who's ready for baseball? It's time for the first pitch. We're about 25 minutes from game time. I'm so excited. Our quick hitters right out of the gates. During the games, we take you to the games where you might see a lot. Greg, Greg, we have a potential walk-off at Wrigley. <sighs> no way. What's going on? Oh, they've got a runner at third, and Nico Horner's up. Here's a pitch. Base hit. Nico rocks it up. Cubs win. Cubs win! Cubs win! And after the games, we're all about instant highlights and player reactions. Nico, congratulations. Your first career walk-off hit. How did that one feel? Oh, man, it's, it's as good as it gets. And an amazing crowd here tonight. Uh, Wrigley Field is a, is a very special place. We're feeling good right now, for sure. And that's how this team covers every team. All in a night's work on MLB Tonight. Series champions of Little League as they won the 2023 Little League World Series at Williamsport. It was Big Lewis Lappy who had the blast to win it. A walk off. Bill Mazeroski style. He doesn't know who Bill Mazeroski no. is, does he? No, no, no. Joe Carter, maybe? It is happy birthday to Bill Mazeroski, by the way. Here is the Little League version of Bill Mazeroski, Lewis Lappy. Lewis, when you hit the ball, what, what was your first thought? Uh, I knew it was going uh, over the fence immediately. <laughs> I love that. He knew it. That's when you square up a baseball well. Way to go, Lewis. Two balls, no strikes on Ryan McKenna. You know, it's funny watching Lewis because before he came up as a coach, you say, hey, Lewis, I don't think they're going to pitch you, but if they do, don't chase anything to give them a chance to, to make it fine. And he looked at me just like Jimmy Chitwood and Hoosiers and said, Coach, I got this. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> you guys kind of had a, a loss early on in the tournament, so you were kind of up against it, facing elimination pretty much every game from there. What was it like to have to go through each game like that, knowing one loss could knock you out? Yeah, so we had already battled adversity before earlier in, in uh, states, and we lost to Sherman Oaks and came back and won. So we had the, the ability to... Uh, be confident when that something like that would happen and I just knew that 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 Texas team was good um, but we made a few mistakes that we usually don't make and we hit the ball hard but we hit it right to him and that's baseball for you so I had the confidence that we were going to come back and he was on the bump that day he'd undefeated and obviously had 10 strikeouts and uh, had a home run that game so um, it was just a fantastic uh, uh, journey that we had out there. So you're basically Shohei Otani yeah. there, then, then a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Throwing all them out with 10 strikeouts and a walk-off home run. Way to go. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lewis, how has life changed for you? So did you get a lot of messages from your family or people reaching out, your friends at school? How, how has it all changed since the big moment? Well, my phone has been blowing up, and <laughs> the whole team has been treated like celebrities after winning the World Series. I bet. Then you mentioned that when you, know, you keep advancing around so each team's better and better. How do you, you know, prepare your team to make sure you know you have to play your perfect game to be able to keep winning and keep advancing? Yeah, you know, the team's got better and, and it's hard to scout at international teams because you're not going to play them until the final, final game. So the only time we can scout is if we had the videos from ESPN that were showing the, the game before and then we'd see who was pitching and who was hitting and, you know, where they were standing and, and what their defense looked like. But... At the end of the day, like John Wooden always said, you still got to go play the game, and they still got to play you, and you still got to play them, and you just got to go out there and win. And that's what we did. Love that. One ball, two strikes on Jorge Mateo. Hey, by the way, how cool was today so far? You see Mike Trout, you've been on the field during batting practice cars. Estevez came over and talking. It's, it's got to be a lot of fun for you guys. What do you think, Lou? Uh, oh, it's, it's amazing because you see Mike Trout on TV making diving plays, and 
And then you're right next to him, meeting him, talking to him, getting his autograph. So it's really neat. That is cool. Yeah, so the cool. Angels have done it over the top special for these kids. And uh, this is kind of the highlight of, uh, of the after party so far. Um, and they really, really, really took care of us. God love you, Angels. Lewis, what do you want to be when you get older? I, I won't say grow up because they're already nine feet tall. <laughs> well, well uh, I want to be a professional ball player. Any, uh, if any team would have me in the MLB, I'd happily pay for them. Yeah, there you go. I like that. Good answer. By the way, I think you could post me up right here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think it would be as a, a hitter or a pitcher? Do you want to try to be like Shohei and do both? Uh, I want to be a hitter, but if I have to, I'll pitch. <laughs> All right. That's what Gooby always said. Yeah, me too. <laughs> they made you pitch for 15 years. Yeah, I know, but I'd rather be a hitter myself. <laughs> that way I can either get four bats a game. <laughs> you hear that sound off the bat. How cool is that? I mean, different sound, obviously, the, the bats you might be using, but it's just such a fun thing to be able to see. This view is incredible, huh? Yeah, it's the sound. It's like you can tell when the ball is squared up nicely and just and you can tell it's going to go a long way. And this view is just perfect. All right, when you stepped on home plate and your teammates are all around you, how, how unbelievable was that for you? Well, after every home run, we do that. But that one was incredibly special because it was a game winner. And it, it was really awesome just having all my teammates pounce on me and all those emotions running through everyone. How do you keep the kids, Coach, focused on you know, the experience of Williamsport and also trying to beat the teams that you're up against? and Kind of mix that fun with trying to win those games. Yeah. So for three years, you know, I teach and preach life lessons through baseball. So everything we do has something behind it. But the po most powerful thing I believe in, in a baseball uh, a team sport like baseball is you have to learn to play as a family. Yeah, there might be times you don't get along, but at the end of the day, you still love each other. You look to your left, look to your right, and that's who you're playing for. And that's what these kids did so well. So even outside of baseball, the value of friendship that they've created will last forever and ever and that's to me what took us the recipe for success and what took us to the top. Yeah I agree with you on that one, coach because I mean the team aspect and, learn, and you learn things to be able to get along together when there's some ups and downs but to put it all together and, and fight and root for each other is so huge. Exactly and you know baseball is an unselfish sport if you're going to play for stats and home runs and for yourself you're probably not going to be on a winning team. I like that one there. I got a little goosebumps on that one. <laughs> Runner going, Ohapi throws down to second, not in time. Jorge Mateo was the American League leader in steals last year, and he has stolen a base here in the top of the third. Yeah, that's a big jump, especially going on first movement for a lefty. He's in a scoring position now for a team that hits the ball really well and hits the ball to all fields so exceptionally well. And there's a lot of room there on that right side of the infield, so that's you got to worry about it. We were successful in that last night. Rutschman lines a base hit to left field. Mateo's being waved home. He's going to test the arm of Grichuk and that throw off the line. Mateo scores easily as Rutschman ends up at second. And the Orioles have picked up the first run of the game. They lead 1 0. You know, it's funny, Mark, you had mentioned hitting to the right side and doing certain things. And that's all this guy will do when he goes to the bat. He's, when he goes to bat, he's going to, I'm going to hit a line drive to the right side every time. And that's a special part of a hitter in baseball lefties want to go to left center righties want to go to right center because that means you're on top of the ball so it's a very good point you make and he does that that's pretty amazing because that allows you to see the ball and travel a little bit deeper in the zone so when you get that mistake like you got there to be able to walk it off their world series the little league world series <laughs> champ at that home run so you're able to stay on that ball yeah it was one of the it was a mistake pitch because if you look back at the video the catch or the pitch is supposed to be in the other's batter's box and he just missed by about one and a half feet. <laughs> That's right. You, you took care of that These mistake. These things happen, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't make any of those mistakes on the mound, so you're waiting for the other team to do that against you, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> me, I mean, if even if I do make a close mistake, hopefully it's a fastball and it'll just zoom right by him. There you go. <laughs> we all know the pe team that makes the less mistakes is usually going to come out a winner. <laughs> Ryan Mountcastle fouls one off. Now, Coach, I understand your brother is a, a guy who's also got a pretty good program going at Loyola High School volleyball coach that has put them as one of the top high school volleyball programs in the country. What is it about your, you and your brother and your family that's kind of lend itself to coaching? 
I, I think it's just in the genes, and I think we have a passion for developing kids. There's a liner and a base hit for Mountcastle holding a third is Rutschman. Now Gritchick bobbles it, and Rutschman comes home to score. A couple of mistakes really in this inning there, especially to the throw over the cutoff man allows the runner to get into scoring position there too. They're holding him up. He looked up there, Gritchick, and unable to control it. And right away they were able to score and take advantage of a, a mistake there. And Rutschman will score on what should be an error on Gritchick. And now two nothing Orioles here in the third. And your field, you know, we talked about it earlier. What's the name? What's the name of your field again? I know Wayne wants to be able to. George, George Brett. Oh, that's right, George <laughs> Brett Field. I knew he was one. I went, I, Wayne wanted to find out about that one for sure. <laughs> what yeah. a setup! <laughs> I love it. Has George been around? Have you heard from George every, since you guys went? Every day out in Pennsylvania, I heard from heard from tonight. He asked me if I was at the Angels game because I texted him. Gooby was here, and Palmer, and Bobby V, and uh, God, who else to be? And he's like, "You must be at the Angels game." I'm like, "Yep." So he was he'll hopefully he'll come out to the uh, parade on Sunday. Uh, he's got a wedding to go to so he's trying to get out of that one. So we'll see. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What's the parade route. Do you have it mapped out. Oh to straight down and the uh, main street to El Segundo left left on eucalyptus and back to Stevenson Field to have a celebration. That is amazing though that they'd be able to have that moment where everyone could celebrate with you in that whole area. It's got to be something you dreamed about. Yeah, you know, it's we're family and it's a community. It's a family and they saw their family in Williamsport. They want to welcome them back and celebrate it. It's incredible. Great community. No balls and two strikes on Anthony Santander. You know, aside from winning it, what was the best experience about being at the Little League World Series? You want that one, Lou? Uh, yeah, I mean, we stay in the dorms. It was really cool because, uh, I mean, we could, well, we were trying to stay up late, but our coach would uh, <laughs> come in and tell us to stop. <laughs> but uh, it all worked out because we won. If we lost, we'd uh, have a problem. There's a drive to left from Santander. Let's see if Richard can handle this one as he makes the catch. Two outs, tagging from first base and advancing to second or trying to. And out at second base is Mountcastle. Well, he might check that one just to make sure he's staying there at second base. He thought he might have got his foot in there. So Grichuk, who made an error earlier in the inning to allow Rutschman to score, trying to make up for it with that throw to second base. Ooh. Real close. And that will end the inning. Mount Castle tagged out. Danny Boley and Lewis Lappy from El Segundo Little League. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Wade. Awesome job. Thanks, Mark. Thank Good see you. Quick pitch has you covered. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. The power of baseball goes beyond the field. Together, together, Yeah, that was awesome. Man, that smile on Lewis's face and Danny, I mean, what a moment. The parade they get to go have soon. They said they feel like celebrities everywhere they're going. 
having a blast. It's, well, they should. I mean, that was fantastic what they were able to accomplish. What do you think for Lewis Lappy over the last month? What do you think sitting up here talking to us ranks on his list of accomplishments? Probably what, 28th? Do you think we cracked the top 30? <laughs> Let's, well, I think we, part of it is the view here. So we, <laughs> yeah. we jumped up there. We got the best view well, in baseball. Yeah. Well, the view's probably 22nd or 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> We got it in there. We might even got a top 20 with the view. Eduardo Escobar swings and misses at that pitch from Dean Kramer. Baltimore with a couple of runs in the top of the third. Escobar strikes out. Kramer has his second strikeout today, so that's one away here in the bottom of the third. Gotta get some offense going here so far. Kramer has been really good of late. He's been really solid here so far tonight. Just that double by Ohapi, that rocket off the wall. Other than that, he's been pretty solid. Tyron Paris at the plate. Big swing through that cutter from Kramer. Pitch that Kramer will mix in with his fastball and his sinker. Throws a variation of the fastball roughly 75% of the time. He's given up home runs. Could be mentioned it earlier. 10 off the cutter, 9 off the four seam fastball, and in total, 26 home runs allowed by Kramer this year. Tied for the seventh most in the American League. Ball to strike on Paris, the number nine batter. The bouncer is going to be a tough play. Paris has great speed. Mateo gets it to first quickly and in time. I was just wondering if he was able to keep Melkaus to keep his foot on the base. It looked like he did. He did all that arm strength to be able to throw at Paris going down the line. All balanced throw and a hard, firm throw and he's able to keep his foot on the base. So that's what you were talking about in memory in Philly about Bryce Harper is, is he gets more acclimated to first base that stretch out there to, to cut down that throw that angle and distance. He ended up making some pretty good plays Bryce Harper first base but the more you see and more of a feel you have as a first baseman. Sean Wells is very good at himself he, that stretch out there to take away that extra couple feet of a throw. Here's Sean well here one ball one strike Kyron Paris moving down the line with elite speed over 30 feet per second. And still Jorge Mateo able to charge that ball and make that strong throw to first to retire him. So a good play by Mateo. Shonowell rips one to right. He has been on base now in 14 straight games to start his major league career. He's one off the record for the franchise set by Darren Erston. Yeah, he had some good swings in batting practice today too. And the youngsters were watching that. There was a they thought he was going to hit a home run today because he had some good shots in batting practice today. He hits that line drive there. He's so good as far as keeping his bat level Threw on a 95 mile an hour fastball. Brandon Drury swings the first pitch and lifts a fly ball to right field. Aaron Hicks will wait for that. And take this game into the fourth inning. This is Chris Bryant. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Chris Bryant plays hard so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. MLB Big Inning brings you the biggest plays of the night. Live as they happen. Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. It's nonstop action on MLB Big Inning. Every night on MLB.tv.
Imagine an entire channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen. And it's gone! With live look-ins to clutch at bats. A walk-off flare! And players on the edge of making history. This could be it! 62! It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike Zone. Wednesdays and Fridays, all season long. Uh, the slider for Reed Devers to go back to last season. As far as a horizontal break, the vertical break, and the spin. Different this season, although he has had more strikeouts with his slider, and he gets that punch out. First thing on that slider upstairs. Gets Westberg on that one, a slider, but he's not quite the same bite to it as far as horizontal break, but he does get more punch outs with that pitch this season because he's now changing speeds with it a little bit more. From 86 early in the season, he was 92, 93. I think that's the reason why a lot of that break wasn't as sharp, but it has been lately a lot better for Detmers. Detmers allowing a couple of runs in the top of the third ended up both being earned thanks to three straight hits. Though an error brought one of the runs home. Adley Rutschman scored on an error by Grichik in left field. Detmers allowing those three straight singles, two runs plated because of it. You mentioned Grichik missing the cutoff man again to allow. Rutschman to get an extra 90 feet, putting him in scoring position. I think you know it's Baltimore and over the last bunch of games. They've bunched hits together in innings. That's how they're able to score. Saw that yesterday going the other way. Today with three straight hits. They had three runs on five hits in the third inning of yesterday's game. And a blast late. Gunnar Henderson put it away with a three-run homer. The Orioles will hit their home runs, but they certainly do splash the ball around. Austin Hayes drills one into left center field for a base hit. Richick cuts that one off, and it's another single, although well struck for the Orioles. That was on a four seamer. Let's take it our bounty quick stats as far as when you look at the difference between the slider usage this season as compared to last year, up 10%. Uh, average velocity almost up three miles per hour. Strikeouts up to 70, and whip percentage also up 5% with his slider as compared to last year, especially early in the season, struggle with it, then bounce back was throwing a lot better, but really average velocity on that slider at 89 miles per hour. Ball one to Gunnar Henderson. Ultimately, Marie Detmers continues to have very good stuff. And the results don't follow that up. Detmers entering tonight's play with a record of three and 10, his ERA above five. Henderson swings through that pitch and it's one ball one strike a lot of shorter outings you look at Detmer's last six starts and, and he's only gotten through five innings twice and he's only gotten an out in the sixth inning once in those last several outings so a lot of four or five inning outings from Detmer's that's a dangerous pitch against Henderson there you saw that swing there see if he can Make a quick adjustment at the plate. You think now he does have him set up for the slider. Now he doesn't have to throw that 89 mile an hour slider. He might be able to throw an 86 or 87 with a little better depth. And get that punch out he needs. Henderson grounded out to the pitcher his first time. Drives this ball foul out of play to the right. And that backed up on him. Stayed on the inner half a dangerous spot. And he's got to make that quick adjustment again as he walks back to that pitching rubber. Well, as we've talked about before ultimately the Angels will have to figure out how to get Detmers to the next level is still just 24 years old obviously a tremendous talent. Strike. Called strike three that pitch right on the edge of the outside corner maybe a touch off the plate but Detmers gets the call as Henderson strikes out four strikeouts now tonight for Detmers. Remember the 93 mile an hour fastball got the benefit of that call that's a nice job by. Logan O'Hop, he just keeps it right there. Not a lot of movement, just enough to be able to give him a good look at the plate to call that a strike, even though I think that was at least a half a baseball off the corner. So now Westberg will bat. He struck out his first time. Lines this one to right center field for a base hit. 
Red Hefo cuts it off, fires it towards second base. They're going to wave the runner around. Hayes is coming home. Great throw by Tyron Paris, and Hayes is out by a mile. They were anticipating him not being in position to make the throw. Paris quickly, he remembered. Remember that game up in Oakland. Another good swing there by Westberg going the other way, but gets it in quickly. Paris right away in position to make a perfect throw to the dish. Renhifo gets it into the relay. And right away turning. And that's that a learning experience he had up in Oakland, that conversation with Benji Gill. And that's what him put in position, a perfect throw to get that big out at the plate. That throw from Paris had a lot on it. A strike to Logan Ohapi. And Austin Hayes cut down trying to score. Remember that game up in Oakland? You had Drury, you had Benji Gill, you had Mike Moustakas all talking to Carmen Perry about what you do as far as get your body in position to make a throw. And he did that perfectly there. So now Detmer is ahead of Aaron Hicks. No balls and two strikes. Orioles with a man cut down at the plate. Tony Mancellino, third base coach for the Orioles, being aggressive in that spot, trying to get Hayes home. And ultimately just trying to catch a young player napping there. The bat broke on this swimming ground ball. Detmer's trying to get over. Shotwell dropped it. And now stuck between third and home and going back to third is Westberg. And Shotwell had some trouble on the transfer, trying to quickly flip it to Detmer's. Would have been a bang bang play. And Shonowell ultimately dropped the ball. It rip of the baseball in the transfer. Once you know that baseball hit the bag and didn't go too far away. Called it a base hit for Hicks. High and tight, that pitch to McKenna. It's one of those growing experiences for Reed Deppers. Have to get through this inning now. You've had a, a good relay throw at the plate, get it out, but you got to get through this one right now. The way Kramer is throwing for Baltimore. One ball, one strike on Ryan McKenna playing center field against the lefty tonight. Cedric Mullins not in the lineup. McKenna's from the same town as Brandon Drury, Grants Pass, Oregon. Well, he went to high school in New Hampshire. Seven hits for the Orioles now against Detmers, trying to power through the fourth inning without another run scoring. Baltimore put up two in the third. It's lifted toward left center field. Gritchick moves over, backing up. He makes the catch. And that ends the inning. No runs for the Orioles despite three hits in the top of the fourth. is getting good on quick pitch late nights and early mornings only on MLB Network 
You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. Player of the week. Why? Those hands up top and get that hip and foot down quickly to be able to get through the baseball on the line. Good view right here. Keeping that hip tight, getting that foot down, hands are up, and then through the baseball on an elevated pitch above the belt. How quick those hands have been for Ren Hifo. Especially you should see some fastballs against Kramer, and he's crushed fastballs. Luis Renifo with his 12 game hitting streak, batting 321 since the 1st of July. One ball, one strike on Renifo leading off here in the bottom of the fourth inning, followed by Moustakis and Ohapi against Kramer, who has pitched well over his last 10 starts. Kramer has had an ERA of 2.9. That's just foul off the bat of Renifo. Kramer had an ERA above five before he got onto this stretch of games. Really uh, similar to Grayson Rodriguez in that regard, where Rodriguez struggled early in the year and has since been able to right the ship. Now so has Kramer. I wonder if she'll, they'll be able to see a, a breaking ball here right now, Randy, for the way he's hitting. He's hitting 295 slugging, 454 versus fastballs, 480 versus. Change ups too, but break ball is a little bit different, so you might see a break a ball here. He's fouled into the Orioles' dugout. Looks like everybody's okay down there. Dean Kramer is from Stockton, California, but his parents were born in Israel. Actually fluent in Hebrew, and he has a lot of family that still lives in Tel Aviv. Two balls, two strikes on Renhifo. Kramer is has a brother who is in the Israeli army. Nice job of fouling off that tough pitch. Slow curveball at 78, so he's throwing a, a number of different pitches already in this at bat against Renhifo. So I'm a changeup, so I'm fastballs, he's throwing cutters, now curveball. Hasn't put him away yet. It's two balls, two strikes. That's on the inside corner, strike three called at the top of the zone. Kramer gets the call in his favor in his third strikeout tonight. Well, that was a tough pitch even to make a pass out, especially when you've been tracking down a lot of the pitches and you go four seam fastball upstairs and bring it back. Touches that top of his own in 94. Hey! Like Mustakas fly to center field his first time. This game becomes even more important to the Orioles now that the Rays have won. They beat the Red Sox eight to six. Brandon Lau hit a walk off homer for Tampa Bay. Rays had won 12 straight games at home against the Red Sox until last night, which helped Baltimore gain a game. So the Orioles, three games up on the Rays at the moment for first place in the American League East. Those two teams will play each other at Camden Yards next weekend. It'll be a four game series in the last four games those teams play against each other this year. Swing and a miss by Mustakis. Back to back strikeouts for Kramer. There's four tonight. And he gets those secondary pitches working. He's pretty tough. Straight down, 12 to 6 break on his curveball. 
Stock is out in front, now, unable to make contact. So far, the one hitter in this lineup for the Angels have had some good swing. They pulled a home run foul, and then a line drive off the wall, left center. Moving Hoppy at the plate. Hoppy with that double his first time, looks at a strike. A change at the top of the American League West tonight. The Astros clobbered the Rangers, who have just had a miserable time lately. And Jose Altuve had three homers. Yeah, natural hat trick, didn't he, in three innings? Yeah, three and three innings. The Astros won that game 14 to 1, and they are now in sole possession of first place in the American League West for the first time this year. Amazing. Yeah, Cincinnati walked it off against Seattle. They had a pretty big lead in that game, too. I think it was 6 to 1, or at least 6 to 2. And the Mariners ended up losing, with the Rangers losing. The standings. In the American League West showing Texas now in third but they might fall out of the playoff mix altogether tonight if the Blue Jays beat Oakland that would knock Texas back out of the playoff picture. Kramer being admonished for not maintaining eye contact with Ohapi three balls and a strike but if Toronto wins then they'll be the third wildcard team Texas would be out. Team that's been in first place most of the year that's really gone for it. They'll have to do some real work over the next three and a half weeks to be a playoff team. Here's the hat trick from Altuve. Notice that Nathan Evaldi came off the IL today and did not pitch well for the Rangers. Gave up two of those home runs to Altuve and then. Dane Dunning piggybacking Ivaldi gave up the third. He just kept going a little bit further towards center every one of those swings for Altuve. And a couple of chances at a four homer game, but settled for three. Hit two yesterday also, so that's five homers in the last two days for Altuve as the Astros have climbed into first place. They're getting that lineup healthy. Michael Brantley back in there now, so they're getting a little bit more healthy. Tomorrow they play each other in Arlington as well. The Astros and the Rangers and it'll be. A pretty interesting pitching matchup on tap tomorrow Scherzer against Verlander. Wow. <laughs> and they were ex teammates about five minutes ago yeah, and about 15 years ago too. They, they were reconnecting. Once again. A grudge match tomorrow between Scherzer and Verlander. Remember there was talk they thought Scherzer might miss or get skipped a couple days back on a start but he was ready to go today. I mean tomorrow. It's a crazy comebacks in games too. The Cubs were down pretty big against the Giants and they've come all the way back too in that game. Well, it's been a struggle for the Giants over the last month. They are now out of the playoff picture in the National League. The National League wild card is a real mess. There are four teams in the mix for that third wild card spot. Right now, Cincinnati has that third wild card position. Arizona could tie the Reds if they win tonight. Miami a little behind, and San Francisco now a little further behind that. Roller, this will be. Virtually impossible. So Henderson puts it in his pocket and Moniak has an infield hit. Randall Gritchick hit a home run last night. It's been a theme for him in his career to beat up on Baltimore. An OPS of 1092 with 56 RBIs, 22 home runs. A home run here by Gritchick would give the Halos the lead now. And he's always aggressive first pitch. Kramer throws a lot of first pitch fastballs. In his two seam and four seam. It's going to be right around 58 percent. So see if he jumps on the first pitch fastball if he gets it. Aaron Judge has absolutely waylaid the Orioles over the years. Really, the Yankees as a whole had until this recent uptick for Baltimore. Richick maintained his with his home run last night. Now a chance to do some damage here with two men on. 
The count in his favor. Two balls, no strikes. A little two out walk there by Kramer. He's got this thing going now for the Angels. Well, he could paint that outside corner with his fastball, though. in there Kramer again painting the outer part of the play two balls two strikes on Gritchick he's been able to hit all four quadrants for this fastball whether it's this sinker or four seam fastball pretty effectively Kramer was the one good piece the Orioles got in their big Manny Machado trade a few years ago the shot of fell off that cutter it was Kramer and four others that were traded for Machado in July of 2018, traded by the Dodgers. Kramer is really the only one that's blossomed into a serious big leaguer. Even that took a while. Last year was really the breakout year for Kramer. Ball three, so now the runners will get a head start with two outs. Might be forced to drive when the right center field on one of these fastball varieties. Ground ball right to the shortstop. Mateo has that. And the inning is over. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. If we weren't proud of the craftsmanship and level of detail that go into every pair of Warby Parker glasses, well, we probably wouldn't show you how they're made, including this part, which is our favorite. Wow. And this is also great. Each pair comes standard with lenses that are scratch resistant, anti-reflective, and UV protective. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Are you feeling stressed, depressed, or just stuck? Hims can help. It all starts with one click. When you take a free assessment at 4 you can connect with licensed medical providers 100% online, typically within 48 hours. They can prescribe trusted mental health medication, if it's right for you, with no insurance required. Through Hims, it's never been simpler to start turning things around. Get started today at 4 Friends and Family Fun Pack. This kid gets it for only $44. Yeah, that's right. Get four tickets, four hot dogs, four soft drinks. For more information regarding the Coca-Cola Friends and Family Fun Pack, visit angels.com slash fun pack. <laughs> All the games. He's always there. <laughs> Jorge Mateo leads off here in the fifth inning. Singled and scored in third. Denver's throwing a lot more changeups coming into this game. We were talking about about three percent changeup usage now, at almost 22 percent. I'm throwing a slider a lot less tonight, mixing in the fastball more, around 50 percent with the fastball in this game. Yeah, coming in at 43 percent fastball usage. It has another changeup there. 
Two balls and a strike on Mateo. All the cool kids here tonight. <laughs> Yeah, you see, you can't beat fun at the old ballpark. Mateo with a looper to left and Gritchick right there. One out in the fifth, our Kia player profile on Adley Rutschman as the Orioles have gone from pretenders to contenders with Rutschman's call up in May of last year. You see what the Orioles. 259 games under Rutschman it looked like and the 259 before that a world of difference that is amazing his leadership skills behind the plate priceless for this team yeah really you know that, that's a lot of people talk about wins above replacement especially now when it comes to MVP voting it's kind of a, a one stop shop to see how a player is doing or, or weighted runs created plus but specifically with wins above replacement. You know that number for Rutschman is probably very good over the last couple of seasons and last year he had five wins above replacement in his rookie year. But the Orioles in a, in a year and a half or almost two years of having Rutschman have had a difference of 61 wins from their previous 259 games. And I know his, his wins above replacement is not 61 over the last two years. So it just goes to show that no matter what stat is out there nothing can really encompass how much one player can mean to one team. I mean it's amazing when he as soon as he makes the major league club the turnaround for the team now the other younger players have done a great job themselves but he's been the big reason in my opinion why this team has turned around so quickly. I mean they were losing 100 plus games to seem every single season. They lost 110 games in 2021 <laughs> that's two years ago. These Orioles are for real and they have had the best record in the American League. There's a good curveball from Detmers on three and one to get into a full count with Rutschman who's a much better hitter from the left side than he is from the right. Very patient hitter. He's already got 73 walks this year. And that's why he bats lead off doesn't really strike out that much. Brendan Hyde has done a great job. He's been the perfect manager for this team with all these young players. Still three and two on Rutschman. Brandon Hyde was a member of the Cubs coaching staff when Joe Madden was there. Took the Orioles manager job after Buck Showalter and had to go through those really lean years as Baltimore was revamping its farm system. Well, it's paid off now. There's still more prospects on the way, namely Jackson Holiday, son of former big league all star Matt Holiday, who was. Pretty much the number one prospect in all the baseball and already at triple A at age yeah, he's, 19. He's real close already. And Mateo is so good at shortstop especially defensively. So he's throwing a slow curve a nasty slider and a fastball in. Now the curve that just missed looked like the home plate umpire Lance Barrett flinched a moment but Detmers issues his first walk tonight. And it's the very patient Rutschman who draws it. And yeah, that was a little bit off the outside corner, but a pretty good take. Mentioned that, that patience at the plate now with 74 walks. Bouncing ball to second should be a double play ball. Drury takes it to the bag and gets it to first for an inning ending double play. Sure, you'll teach her to drive a car. Then use Greenlight and teach her to save up for her own car. Mowing lawns and getting paid. Navigate the world of earning, saving, and investing together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV? Get all the channels you want on the only live TV streaming service rated number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power. Try free at FuboTV.com. With everything you have on your plate, earning your degree online seems impossible. But at Grand Canyon University, we specialize in helping you fit a master's degree in business into your busy day. Your graduation team, led by your own GCU counselor, provides you with the personal support you need to succeed. Achieve your goals with a plan and team behind you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. What does the future of strength look like? 
It's a personal trainer that assesses your strength and adds weight as you progress. It's dynamic weight that adjusts for you in real time for a more efficient workout. Come on! And it's a roster of coaches that motivates you to get stronger, faster. The future is strength you can feel and results you can see. And you can only experience it on Tonal. Baltimore, the scores. We reached the bottom of the fifth here at the Big A. Dean Kramer has allowed no runs, three hits through the first four innings. Hmm. Well, not everybody crowds around the camera like we do. <laughs> <laughs> Eduardo Escobar leads off here in the bottom of the fifth, followed by Kyron Paris and then Shawnawell. No Shohei in the lineup tonight. Well, it sounded like Shohei was feeling better today and was trying to get in the lineup tonight. The Angels certainly being cautious with Shohei, who has a lot ahead of him, and even for the rest of this season, Shohei is able to continue to set the Angels' single season home run record. He could win the Major League home run crown for the year. Get himself on some lists that either have a couple of Hall of Famers or nobody on it. Yeah, I mean it's amazing. You already look at his numbers this season. Right now, it's you can't even imagine putting those type of numbers on the mound and at the plate and 20 stolen bases. Another form of a fastball cutter there. So he's he's at about 74 percent. Fastball usage between his two four seam and cut fastball. That was one of the few in the middle of the plate today. And really working the quadrants of the strike zone. See Kramer today using that fastball as he typically does quite a bit between the variations of the fastball. I pop up here from Escobar and Henderson makes the catch. Let's take a look at our team over coverage cam. Let's go back to that game in Oakland where you, you see Kyle in Paris not getting the position on the cutoff. He was looking the other way towards second base in that quick conversation with Benji Gill. And here he is tonight learn so quickly he's already turning his body and making a perfect throw that angle he's able to get there and a lot on the throw all because he learned so fast from just a few games ago and what you're supposed to do how like, this game is so quick here at the major league level you've got to be in position to make those quick decisions and he did here tonight. Love that transition there for Paris make that play today. Grounded to short his first time at the plate tonight swings through that cutter one ball one strike. Harris made a really good play in the game last night as well. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to him today about it. He says yeah that was that was a fun play and that was all over social media. Highlight reel. There's a strike Zach Neto with a couple of hits including a home run at triple A tonight. Certainly Neto will come right back into the shortstop position once he is able to play big league games again but a great experience for Paris who spent all of this year at double A. I don't know that he's going to be knocking on the door of the roster at the beginning of next year but you know as he gets more experience maybe some time at triple A next year he could be a valuable piece of depth within the organization at that position. Play both in middle infield position second and short. Was the play last night on the ball hit very sharply by Santander. An excellent play by Kyron Paris. How quick he was on the transfer on the throw, the one hop perfect throw to first base. Swings and misses here for strike three. 
It's that nasty cutter for Kramer. It is strikeout number five for Kramer. Now the third time through the order, although typically it's the second time through where Kramer struggles the most. Opponents have hit 310 against him the second time through the order. And 190 the third time through as he gets to his 80th pitch of the game. Nolan Shonowell looks at ball one. One for two with a single as Shonowell waits and takes ball two. It was another time on base for Shonowell, 14 consecutive games to begin his career. He has scored 12 runs. He's been on base 27 times within the 14 games. And he is certainly capable of handling the bat at this level. And I'm sure as time goes on here, you'll start to see that power develop. Whether that's if he stays at the big league level moving forward or if he does go back to the minor leagues. Either way, you'd expect that the home runs that he hit in college will follow him into pro ball at some point. Yeah, once he gets that little bit more of a launch angle to be able to lift the baseball, and hits down on the baseball, but he hits down so well and line drives to all fields, it's tough to take that away from him. There's a strike from Kramer to make it three and two. Those two pitches in the sequence were definitely out of the strike zone. Call it a strike. This one's well out of the strike zone here. Well out of the zone. Lance Barrett, a veteran, the home plate umpire tonight. Shonowell knows the strike zone better than anybody. He said, uh, wow. <laughs> well, okay, Lance. <laughs> and that time, ball four, although <laughs> the Orioles were walking off the field after a couple of those were called strikes earlier in the at bat that was definitely below the strike zone again there was three of them in that sequence two of them were called a strike Shonowell gets on base again <laughs> Watchman tried to sell that one and with that walk now two out walk and power Brandon Drew we talked about him in the opening with 20 home runs it's the second Second baseman for the Angels with 20 or more home runs in a season. Bobby Gritz did it twice. Balls, no strikes on Drury. Just saw a tweet from the minor league baseball account. A great play by an outfielder for the Lake Elsinore Storm. Homer Bush Jr. Wow. Having a hard time over here now that Homer Bush Jr. is in professional baseball. Yes. Jeez. Three balls, no strikes on Drury. Still say the way he's driving the ball and his knowledge of the strikes on green light here for Brandon Drury, especially if he gets four seamer cut fastball away to see how far he can hit the right center. Sure, he'll have the green light. 20 homers on the year for Drury. And he's right on the outside corner. We highlighted it in the open. Just the second Angels second baseman hit 20 or more homers in a year, joining Bobby Gritch, who did it a couple of times. It's been a nice year for Brandon Drury. The Angels have now had 200 home runs as a team. Hey, the ceiling, you know, Bobby's watching the game here tonight. Connection with both these teams. Ball four to Drury. And Luis Renifo will bat after we hear from Kia. Chris Holt goes out to the mound. The Orioles pitching coach. Luis Renifo has been an incredibly hot hitter and he has a chance to do some real damage here. A lot of that damage generally is on that first pitch. 
Luis Reynifo. CNL Perez warming up in the Baltimore bullpen. Reynifo with seven home runs on the first pitch. Put in play. Doing this 12 game hit streak. He's been hitting the ball to all fields. Take a look at our stat cast for you where he's hit the baseball 14 singles, a couple doubles, a triple, four home runs, and he's hit the ball to all fields. The power has been pulled. OPS of just under 1,300. Flat out to deep left earlier. Takes a strike at the bottom of the zone there on the cutter from Kramer. Bounced off the glove of Kramer. It falls behind the mound. Everybody's safe. And if he lets that go, that's going to be a routine out. Sometimes you just react. That's why you always look back to see where your middle infielders are set up. Should be an infield hit. If it is, that will extend Renifo's hitting streak. I mean, you see Mateo, he's going to be right there. He can either step on the bag or make the throw the first. And because of that, get an infield hit. That's going to be the end for Kramer. So Brandon Hyde will not let him get through the fifth inning here. The bases are loaded. Bustock is due up. He'll face a lefty in a moment. MLB Network and sign in with your TV provider info. Then watch MLB Network all day, every day, your way. Wake up to baseball's biggest stories. Robert Flores wearing tweed. Wake up to big name guests. Very special guests hanging out on the crush red velvet. This show is tough to get ready for. And wake up to a whole lot of fun. <laughs> wearing a robe holding a wooden phone. Oh. MLB Central. It's absolutely hilarious. The show baseball fans and baseball players wake up to. The show's starting to pick up. I love the energy. I love the unexpected performances. Weekday mornings on MLB Network. We'll have a little fun and we'll laugh. Hey kids, join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game on MLB Network. On save on the action packed Nissan lineup today at the Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event. By Spectrum One, internet advanced Wi-Fi and mobile for just $49.99 a month. Visit Spectrum.com. And by Jack in the Box, the double bacon sourdough jack. Slice after slice after slice of bacon. Try it. Angels have a chance. Down by a pair. They've loaded the bases here in the fifth inning. And Dean Kramer gets somewhat of an early hook. He was at 92 pitches. Yeah, not been hit all that hard tonight. Here with two outs in the fifth inning. Back to back walks. Then an infield hit. Have loaded the bases. Now Sionel Perez. Will face Mike Mustakis with the bags full. Yeah, Perez, he does have a power fastball from that arm angle. 94 to 99. I'll throw a curveball slider and a changeup. But this is one of those at bats we talk about Mustakis always with those big moment at bats. It's the time right now for him. Base hit could tie this game up. Or an extra base hit could give the Halos the lead. But that was a pretty quick hook for Kramer. Especially because he threw the ball well against Mustakis in the first two at bats. Now, Kramer's won a dozen games this year, and the Orioles starting pitching has not been bad, but they don't really have any standouts necessarily in their rotation. Grayson Rodriguez is trying to be. Kramer's had a good year. They got Jack Flaherty from the Cardinals. I think Kyle Bradish might be the one that has stepped up to be their ace. But somewhat instructive that Brandon Hyde didn't trust Kramer here. As Perez gets a swing and a miss from Moustakas and the Orioles need wins it's September they're trying to lock down a division title 
And Brandon Hyde deciding not to ride with one of his starters here in this spot. He goes to his bullpen in the fifth inning. And Moustakas hits a bouncing ball to second. Thrown out by Jordan Westberg, and the Angels leave him loaded here in the fifth. Listen to live Black Ad Free audio from every major league club. And Aaron Judge with some thump. Stream video of minor league games. That's a go ahead. Grand slam. And watch the best baseball highlights and look ins on MLB Big Inning. The all new At Bat is your all in one live baseball subscription for only $3.99 per month. There she goes. Home run, Pete Alonso. Subscribe to At Bat within the MLB app today. Hey kids, join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game on MLB Network. Baseball's biggest moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk-offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning. Every night on MLB.tv. This is Garrett Cole. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Garrett Cole plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. The edge. 18 pitches on the edge today. Four seam fastball, curveball, and sliders. Change up all around the edges of the plates. StackS 3D powered by Google Cloud. How effective he has been avoiding the middle of the plate, pitching on the edges and give him a chance to get into this sixth inning here tonight against Baltimore. He's given up seven hits. They've been scattered. Well, kind of an aggressive base running move from the Orioles in the fourth inning. Got a man thrown out at home. That helped the line for Detmers stay with just two runs allowed. It's Santander leading off the sixth inning. If the Angels can get Detmers through this sixth and keep the score pretty much where it is. Turns into a pretty good outing for Detmers and a lengthier outing than what we've been used to seeing lately outside of that no hit bit he had in Texas. Popped up here, Santander hits it toward Escobar. And there's one out. It's another pitch on the edge or even slightly off the edge. You get a pop up. This is kind of where you get tantalized by. Reed Detmers showing the ability to go through a very good lineup the way that he has tonight. Hitting his spots, getting softer contact, and holding down a pretty excitable offense. There's a strike to Austin Hayes, who was thrown out at home, trying to score on a double by Jordan Westberg in the fourth inning. That's a pretty good separation of speeds between his curveball and his four seamer. That was at 72. He falls in with 93. Fastball in. Then he came back with a changeup. So that's good pitching right there. For Denver. So curveball, fastball, changeup. Love that percentage of changeups thrown today for Reed Detmers. Swing and a tip into the glove of Vohapi for strike three. Detmers gets a strikeout. It's five strikeouts. You know, he hasn't been totally reliant on the strikeouts tonight. That's why his pitch count really is pretty reasonable now into the sixth inning here with two outs. So in that sequence, he threw a curveball, he threw a fastball, he threw a changeup, and finished him off with a slider. So when you haven't thrown all four of your pitches like that from the get-go every single batter, you still have that, and you can still fool some hitters. There's a strike to Henderson, who's 0 for 2. Henderson has not hit all that much against left-handers this year. Really got off to a very slow start overall for the season. A lot of that was because he wasn't doing anything against lefties. Still hitting just 217 against them. And one ball, one strike here.
Demers with a good pitch mix tonight, hitting his locations well, and it's you know kind of begs the question: How do you bottle this up and get this out of him most of the time? You need to start building confidence. That's what you got to do. You love to be able to see after you get through this inning here, get Henderson out, get the, some offense going, pick up a W. You really build that confidence. The record has him in kind to Detmers. He has not gotten much run support overall this year, and that has continued tonight. Henderson drives one to the right field corner, another extra base hit for Gunnar Henderson. He has great speed, but he will pull up at second base, a two out double. Yeah, a couple things on that pitch right there. One, it was a lot of the play, it was a curveball. He kind of sped up his bat here. See how he was able to stay back on it, it was elevated. But because of his hard sliders and fastballs, he was laid on on a slow curveball that allowed him to speed up his bat and another extra base hit for Henderson. Going with 23 home runs, now 24 doubles. So this becomes that big batter here again for Reed Deppers to be able to keep the team close here to put yourself in a position to pick up a win. In the air to left field, hit pretty well, but Grichuk backing up makes the running catch. Westberg flies out. That gets Detmers through the sixth. Hey, kids. Join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game on MLB Network. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. I'd say this calls for celebration. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. Oh my goodness, what a play! Every game. Go! Every night. Swing and a miss! Every highlight that makes the headlines. Are you kidding me? We live today, preview tomorrow. This race in the NL Central is getting good. On Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. It's Ducks night at the Big A. Friday, September 8th, the Angels take on Cleveland. The first 25,000 fans will receive a Mike Trout hockey jersey. That's brought to you by Valley Sports West. For more info, angels.com slash promotions. <laughs> Logan O'Hoppy leading off here in the bottom of the sixth inning as the Angels trail by two. CNL Perez in relief of Dean Kramer, who lasted just four and two thirds innings. He was pulled with the bases loaded in the fifth, and Perez got the last out, getting Mustakis to ground out. Slide softly to right over toward the line is Aaron Hicks. One out, and we'll get in the car with Hyundai. Get away with a great deal only at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Mickey Modiak, the batter infield hit for Modiak his last time. He'll face the lefty Perez here. So some good swings from Moniak against Kyle Muller the other day in Oakland. And a lefty lefty battle. Yeah, a couple hits against him. Stayed on the baseball really well. Getting more and more comfortable, it would seem, against left handers is Moniak. No balls, two strikes. 
Randall Gritchick behind Moniacs. The Angels try to get on the board against Baltimore. Orioles pitching has been pretty good since the All Star break. Everything they've done has been really good since then. Moniac, it's a one hopper to first. Perez late to the back, close play. In time, Moniac retired. And Perez really falls off toward the third base side. It took him a moment to gather himself and get toward first. No close play. He had that good angle to be able to beat Moniac there by a stride. And that'll be it for him. He faced those three batters. Once he came back out, he had to face two more. Retired all three that he faced. And now Brandon Hyde goes back to his bullpen with two outs here in the sixth. We'll see Jorge Lopez. with every team on MLB Network wherever you go. Just download the MLB app, click MLB Network, and sign in with your TV provider info. Then watch MLB Network all day, every day, your way. This is Mookie Betts. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo, helping players play harder on MLB Network. The power of baseball goes beyond the field. What an exciting time. Together, 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 together. Christopher Russo, this is Joey Votto, and this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Christopher Russo plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. Must be nice to sit atop that Madison Avenue ivory tower, looking down on us with those luscious locks. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're just great. High Heat with Christopher Russo. It took me the last two weeks prepping for this interview. I didn't realize how much I love you. You are the best. On MLB Network. Food that you're gonna have and, and not worry about what's uh, whatever everybody's gonna say about it. Ah, uh, probably have to go with like a, ice cream. There's a pretty good spot uh, in your Belinda handles that uh, me and the family like to go to. Uh, what's that flavor you go with, man? Uh, they got a raspberry chocolate chunk that's really good. That's the one I like. Everybody know that. I, I, I love it for the chow. It's a lot of meat over there, chicken heart, picanha, everything. Bomb. You're eating re really good because the food's really good. You enjoy a good moment. You talk to people over there. It's a good time. You know, it's really good. Oh, that, yeah. Did that surprise you <laughs> on that one, Wayne? <laughs> no. Escobar, he, a very predictable answer yeah, from Eduardo I asked him, Escobar. I said, did you ever like, okay, I, I, no more, no more. And he goes, no, no, I keep going and keep no, going. It, and that never stops. See, Fogo power for Eduardo <laughs> yes. Escobar. Uh, uh, that's incredible. Yes. I hope he bats here and gets his Fogo power on against the new pitcher for the Orioles. Here, yeah, Jorge Lopez in the game, and he gives up a base hit. Diving effort from Hayes. Well, he's and got a shot now. Yeah, here it comes. Let's see if he can get his Fogo power on against Jorge Lopez, who's had a horrific year. Still has that great power fastball. That was a 96. Flares that into the outfield. He's with the dive. We can't have back there to be able to protect him on that dive. But one swing into that, you got yourself a tie game. Looking for that power. <laughs> Escobar homered in Oakland. Probably right after you asked him that question. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely was. <laughs> got them all lathered up for that. Yes. So, all right. <laughs> There's Lopez with his 6 ERA. He's had a tough time. He was with the Twins and then the Marlins. Before coming to the Orioles. Well, he was trying to on that one. 97 mile an hour fastball in that lower part of the strike zone. That is the happy zone for Eduardo Escobar to be able to drive that out. Ball one strike on Escobar. There was definitely a lot of room down that right field line if he does pull one down the line. Now one and two. Lopez 
Was traded from Minnesota to Miami in late July. And he was having such a tough time. He was traded for Dylan Floro. Really, both of those pitchers were having rough years. And then the Marlins just let him go. The Orioles picked him up. He's not eligible for the playoff roster with Baltimore. He was picked up after September 1st, so he cannot be on the postseason roster, but he can certainly have a hand in the Orioles winning the division. Definitely was really, really solid in that bullpen role after being a starter early on with Baltimore. That's on the inside corner, strike three. So a strikeout for Jorge Lopez to end the sixth. Loco. Bueno, hay que, hay que conmemorar la vaina, loco. Una corona que no la mete. Ay, ay, ay. Me debe una. No, me ha la ciudad. Una ciudad así tan bonita, ¿no? Wow. Como en el estadio, ya se ve. Pues para la segunda, oh. la segunda casa. Dame tu secreto de la vida más que. Yo me disfruto lo más que yo puedo de mi vida. Salud. <risa> la vida más vida. This is Christopher Russo. This is Joey Votto. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Christopher Russo plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. Must be nice to sit atop that Madison Avenue ivory tower, looking down on us with those luscious locks. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a disgrace. High Heat with Christopher Russo. It took me the last two weeks prepping for this interview. I didn't realize how much I love you. You are the best. On MLB Network. Keep up with every team on MLB Network wherever you go. Just download the MLB app, click MLB Network, and sign in with your TV provider info. Then watch MLB Network all day, every day, your way. I'm gonna do work, that's on me. Watch games and coverage all day, every day, your way on MLB Network. Back to Mike Trout's 300th career home run, which also gave him the franchise record, breaking Tim Salmon's mark of 299. Of course, Tim Salmon in the ballpark, although no fans were, kind of an unfortunate side note to that happening in the 2020 season is that the fans didn't get to give Mike that big ovation that he deserves for setting the franchise record for home runs as Aaron Hicks leads off the seventh with a base hit against Reed Detmers and Trout has extended that career home run lead certainly since then well ahead of the field now as that top five includes Salmon Garrett Anderson Brian Downing and Albert Pujols it was an extremely hot day that day I remember when Trout hit that one out but you know it was a dry heat though and 109 degrees the warmest game in franchise history and there is Tim Salmon, who is now in an Angels uniform in the dugout, as a coach and advisor. Chuck Finley uh, in the dugout as well, as he has taken on the pitching side of that same role. And there's Trout with his 368 career home runs. Just get him on the field. You still dream of what's ahead 400, 500, maybe more. Mike Trout can. Be healthy over the next several years. Look pretty amazing. Eight home runs off of King Felix Hernandez. He just got put in the, the Hall of Fame up there, I think, up in Seattle recently. So, I mean, that's how good he was. But he had Trout with unbelievable numbers against him and Seattle. Swing and a miss by Ryan McKenna on the slider from Detmers, who's still out there here. In the seventh inning, Jimmy Herget is warming up in the Angels' bullpen, but Detmer's giving the Angels some length. Only the second time he has worked past six innings since the middle of July. A blooper toward left center field. Paris got a good jump, ranging out, makes the catch. He did a nice job on that. That route he took it quickly off the back because that ball looked like it had a chance of falling in there, but nice route and nice play by Paris. See where he's playing. He's a double play depth. 
And then Angley took, runs it down, gets around just in case, tag it up or away from the base. Well, back to even that relay throw earlier today. I mean, he's figured out a lot of stuff quickly here at the major league level. Just remember, just a few weeks ago, he's in double A. Here he is in the show. Well, he's a great athlete, and he has tremendous physique. You can tell Kyron Paris is about as in shape and as anybody in the major leagues. Jorge Mateo looks at a strike, one ball, one strike. Paris just 21 years old, so he is certainly a part of the future and getting an opportunity to show what he can do at a young age at a high level. Two balls, one strike on Mateo. I'm going to change out the pitch before it continues to use that pitch tonight. That slider just off the plate in. There's a strike two and two. I was talking to Buck Showalter the other day doing a Mets game last Friday night. And he said for a young player like Kyron Paris or any young player that comes up and he talked about it with Manny Machado when he came up to the Orioles. So he just wants to see them be able to play defense at this level first. Because that's where you feel the game gets quick on you, you know, defensively in, in decisions you make whether to be at a certain part of the field relay throws we saw that. Covering bags backing up your you know infielders and relay throws in all those things come into play so the game gets real quick on the defensive side but he has a nice job as far as slowing that down since that one game in Oakland and he said young hitters will always find their level they'll get where they need to go offensively whatever they're capable of doing they'll do it but defensively that's a whole different story and I think Kyron Paris has shown that defensively he can handle this level and if his offense gets to its full potential, he could be a serious major league player. Yeah. Because he can handle himself so well defensively. And with the speed he has, he can create a lot of runs. Two balls, two strikes on Jorge Mateo. Round to third. Escobar with the backhand gets it to second one. Mateo can fly and he's safe at first. You can almost guarantee he's going to be on the move probably the first pitch. Rutschman is due up and Phil Nevins on his way to the mound. Reed Detmers has made it through six and two thirds innings. Ninety eight pitches. I've seen Phil motion to the bullpen. Might just be taking the temperature of Detmers here before Rutschman stands in. Remember Rutschman is a better left handed hitter than right handed. So the better matchup would be to stick with the lefty. But instead Phil Nevin will take Detmers out of the game. And Jimmy Herget will face Rutschman from the left side. Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort, and it all starts right here with MLB Tonight's first pitch. Let's go to the ballpark. It's a good chance to look around a little bit. A match between the best teams in the National League going head-to-head. -head. During the games, we take you to the games where you might see a live walk-off. Yes! And after the games, we want to hear from the players as bad as you do. First career walk-off hit. How did that one feel? Oh, man, it's, it's as good as it gets. And that's how this team covers every team on MLB Tonight. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. Hey kids, join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game on MLB Network. Marco, we're the nice job by Reed Deppers today. Five punch outs in the game. I'll tell you, he used all his pitches very effective. We talked about that knee for that fastball down. 
He's also doing a good fastball upstairs, mixing his good changeup slider and good 72 mile an hour curveball throughout. So he used all his pitches very, very effectively today and getting those high fives by everybody in that dugout. It's hoping that Jimmy Herker can keep that just a two nothing deficit. A job there by Reed Detmers today. It's one of those games where you can build on after that one. One of the more solid outings for Detmers this season, especially in the second half. He's had a lot of shorter starts. This is a longer one. Six and two thirds innings, and Hergett's first pitch goes to the backstop. So Mateo is, is already probably looking to steal second base anyway. He just gets there on a wild pitch. Hergett did a nice job for the Angels last year. This year he has had a hard time even staying on the big league roster. He's facing a dangerous hitter, especially from the left side of the plate in Rutschman, and now they won't even bother. Rutschman gets walked intentionally, and the batter will be Mountcastle. Castle has been pretty good with runners in scoring position this season at 297. Also slugging at 634, and always aggressive, extremely aggressive on the first pitch. Two hits tonight. He had two yesterday as well. He's had a big second half. Only two to nothing here. Herget Frisbee's one's in for a strike. And the Angels have given Detmers some of the lowest run support in the American League this year, and that number only going down with nothing on the board while he was out there tonight. Rounded to third, down the line, Escobar with the backhand, racing to the back, beats Mateo. And that's the final out of the inning. So Jimmy Herget helps Detmers get through the seventh, Eduardo Escobar with an empty play down the third baseline. The Angels still down by just two. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. With Home Chef, you're not just home cooking, you're home acing it. Our convenient options are ready in as little as 15 minutes and way quicker than takeout. When it comes to making dinner, fill in the blanks with Home Chef. Delicious, meat simple. Get 18 free meals when you sign up at homechef.com. Welcome to the Aura Sleep Lab. <coughs> you need a bit more deep sleep. Getting enough high quality sleep increases immunity. Why? Because sleep helps fend off sickness. A good night's sleep boosts your number of infection-fighting antibodies and cells. And with your Aura Ring, you can learn how to sleep deep and keep your immunity up. It's like having a sleep lab on your finger. Go to sleep with AuraRing.com. For more details, Kyron Paris due to lead off here in the bottom of the seventh, and Matt Dice will be the pinch hitter instead. Recently activated from the IL. Saw him out throwing today. So Dice batting for Paris, who was 0 for 2 in this one. Facing Jorge Lopez here in the bottom of the seventh. This is where you get into that kind of murky territory of trying to win a game and also trying to see what young players can do. Kyron Paris taken out of the game here for Thice. 
had a good swing at that. Probably the right move if you're trying to win this single game. But also if you're thinking about developing a player or seeing what that young player can do. Solid defensively today by Paris. Again. So change up fastball, change up for Thice. Yes, Lopez. Two balls, two strikes on uh, Thice. Shanoel and then Drury follow here in the bottom of the seventh. It'll be the top of the order. One out. Here's a quick word from Jack of the Box. My classic sourdough jack. It's named after your two favorite things, sourdough and me. Only at Jack. So now Nolan Shanowell is the batter after Thais hitting for Paris strikes out. Shanowell's gotten on base a couple of times, a single and a walk. Lopez finding his curveball as he drops in a strike. Let's see if he's throwing his curveball for a strike with his along with his changeup and still his fastball, especially upper part of the zone. At 96 97. Makes it tough. Line to left center, base hit. What a swing. Cut off in the gap by McKenna. That'll hold Shanoel at first. That's that old Tony Gwynn 5.5 hole over the shortstop's head. Stayed on that sinker. That's a 97 mile an hour sinker, and it stayed on it. Good swing there by Shanoel again. Two hits. On base three times. Coming in an on base percentage of 417. We don't want to make comparisons, but that's that spot where Tony Gwynn and Rod Carew, those great left handed contact hitters, got so many of their hits just lining a ball right over the shortstop. And Wade Boggs, same thing, just staying on the baseball and lining it that way. Try to pull that, it's a ground ball in a second. Shanowell on base three times again tonight. Two hits total for him. Now Drury represents the tying run. Looks like Rutschman needs something equipment wise. And maybe there was a ball on the field in front of the dugout. So Brandon Hyde but doing an extra job tonight. Has to clean up around the front of the dugout. Well, Segundo Little League coach Danny Boley watching that and saying, big deal. I have to clean things up all the time. All with the bunch time. Of 12 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time now, especially with defense set up with two strikes, you're thinking extra base hit, but now you're thinking base hit in that right side of the infield for Drury. Line to left center, base hit for Drury. That one rolling all the way to the wall. Shotwell's on his way to third. He's being way at home. Shotwell will make it easily. Brandon Drury gets the Angels on the board. RBI double, and it's two to one. Well, he has been so clutch. 23 doubles, 20 home runs, a couple triples, 67 RBI. Of a good swing. But down, he got a break ball and stayed on that. Lines that one. It has kept going through the alley all the way. Showing away able to score. Just like that, a one run game now in scoring position for the hottest hitter. On the Halos right now, Luis Ranjifo with a base hit to get his keep his hitting streak going down 14. So Jorge Lopez faces five hitters, allows three hits, and he heads out as the Orioles go back to their pen. With the game time map, I paid 60% less than this guy. What? And it's not just sports tickets, it's also concerts. Oh, come on! Download Game Time. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Are you feeling stressed, depressed, or just stuck? Hims can help. It all starts with one click. When you take a free assessment at 4 you can connect with licensed medical providers 100% online, typically within 48 hours. They can prescribe trusted mental health medication if it's right for you, with no insurance required. 
Through Hims, it's never been simpler to start turning things around. Get started today at 4 If we weren't proud of the craftsmanship and level of detail that go into every pair of Warby Parker glasses, well, we probably wouldn't show you how they're made, including this part, which is our favorite. Wow. And this is also great. Each pair comes standard with lenses that are scratch resistant, anti-reflective, and UV protective. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Orioles Luis Renjifo do up next and he received AL player of the week for the first time in his career congrats to him Bill Nevin was talking about the player that he has become and he's been working putting a lot of work in actually with Angels hitting coach Marcus Timms he said they have a great relationship they've been doing a lot in the cage together Marcus has been helping out with his pitch selection he's been swinging on more of the right pitches sometimes you just click with somebody and that's what he's seeing happening right now and guys He's been talking about it. He extends his hitting streak tonight, right? But he's also so versatile. He's been playing that position out in right field for right now just because the team needs him out there. And Phil said he can trust him anywhere. So a pretty positive week for Luis Renifo. Pretty positive couple of months for Renifo. And it culminated with player of the week named today for what he has done over the last several days, but really over the last several weeks. Renifo has been a bright spot for the Angels offense. By the way, it feels like I've seen Carlin in about 15 different colored jackets tonight. She <laughs> must have brought her entire wardrobe with her. Renifo one for three with a single. He swings and misses at that pitch. And he's been crushing lefties too. 321. Four home runs. 17 OPS. Tying runs in scoring position. Angels have gotten one home here in the seventh. No balls, two strikes. Danny Coulomb getting that cutter past Renifo. Well, fastball, not overpowering, but it'll cut it. 89 93, you got that curveball slider changeup. Mike Moustakis on deck. Angels with back to back hits here in the seventh to get on the board. That's in there, strike three call. Curveball from Kulon. Freezes Renhifo. So two outs. And that'll be Mustakis. And that definitely got a lot of the strikes over there. It's a pretty big punch out there for Lance Barrett. Mustakas with a long drive to right. That's a base hit. Drury around third. He comes home. That's the tying run. Mike Mustakas makes it two to two. Loose, loose again. Clutch moment. Line drive. Tie ball game. Swing it early and doing some damage on that first pitch. Got a cutter and lines it. Tie ball game. Those two runs charged to Jorge Lopez. It was Shanoel who got the rally started. Now Hoppy bats with this game tied up. Rounded down the third base line, stopped by Henderson. Long throw on a bounce. It is in time wow, to get on Hoppy. What a play. He's already made a couple plays at third base already. That would give the Halos the lead more than likely. The balance and then the throw we get the out tie ball game. MLB tonight, the ultimate late night baseball party. Oh, man. With live look-ins to the night's biggest moments. How hot was that? 
That's mine. What? The best interviews. I've never asked a player, do you need a blanket? It is no, kind of cold out the there. Bear. And cutting edge analysis from TV's best former players fresh off the field. Get your hands up. There's nothing quite like MLB Tonight. This is going to be a big deal tonight. This one takes the cake. That is awesome. MLB Tonight. Late nights on MLB Network. Hey, kids, join MLB Network and your favorite players for a show made just for you. Play ball. It's all the big moments, bat flips, and amazing plays from an exciting week of baseball and tips to up your game on MLB Network. Tomorrow night, Patrick Sandoval will get the ball in the last game of this series against Kyle Gibson. So it's some really good games two times against Baltimore on his batting average, too. He's been on a pretty good roll of late anyhow, and he said today, all he's going to do, he's going to throw strikes and attack the zone tomorrow. Sounds like a good plan as Aaron Loop enters the game here with the score now tied. Luis Renjifo moves from right field to shortstop. Not too many guys can do that. Renjifo makes the move after Paris was lifted for a pinch hitter. And now Trey Cabbage in the game to play right field. Bill bat in the number nine spot in the order. Santander leads off the eighth against Loop, then Hayes and Henderson. Part of the reason why Loop is even in the game here is because Henderson typically struggles against left-handed pitching. He'll be due up third. Ball one to Santander. Well, Henderson made an unbelievable play. That baseball was destined to be down the line for a double, probably the go ahead run. Hey. Angels put up two in the bottom of the seventh to tie the game. RBIs from Drury and Moustakis. Makes it a little tight for the Orioles. There's a drive to the gap in left center. Moniak got a good jump, but he won't get there. Cuts it off quickly. Santander with good speed gets to second base. Lead off double here in the top of the eighth inning. Santander, so many big hits against the Angels this season. That pitch got a lot of the zone. Trying to go inside. It was at heart of the plate, and he jumped all over that one. Pinch runner now. And Mullins out to second base to run for Santander. So the leadoff man in scoring position for Baltimore. That'll make a tough on loop with Austin Hayes due up. And it's Henderson. Looks like Jose Soriano getting ready in the Angels bullpen. So probably be just a three batter assignment for loop who delivers a strike to Hayes. Toronto is crushing Oakland tonight so the Blue Jays will move past the Rangers for the third wild card spot in the American League as long as they hold on to a six run lead at the Coliseum. And Tampa Bay beating Boston tonight in 11 innings the Orioles need to win to hold a three and a half game lead over the Rays. For first place in the East. The Royals fans making the trip, rooting them on here in the top of the eighth. Down the line, foul and past Escobar. One thing Aaron Loop has, he has that spin move back to second base. You might see that. Coming up real soon with Mullins at second base. He'll lift that front leg up and spin back around. 
Try to pick him off at second. Hayes fouls that one back to keep the count one ball, two strikes. Mullins at second running for Santander, who doubled to start the inning. Loop in relief, the third pitcher for the Angels tonight. Reed Detmers worked six and two thirds. Allowed just two runs. Jimmy Herget got the last out in the seven. And one and two, Hayes fouls one off. Two balls, two strikes. Henderson on deck. Trying to get him to chase that change up below the zone. He's laid off that one. He does struggle against change ups. Back to it again out in front. Already seven pitches in this at bat. <laughs> Orioles have a good fan base, and it's always been kind of a sleeping giant of a fan base. I feel like the Orioles get back to. Prominence as they have this year, then fans will respond more and more. And a good chunk of orange shirts on the first base side tonight. Swing and a miss. That's a big punch out. Now with a lefty at the plate, a little clear, more clear throw for Ohapi if Mullins does try to steal. That's going to be up to Luis Renjifo to keep him close at second after that swing and miss on a cutter. Batter is Henderson. For his last 17 games, he's had 12 extra base hits, 14 RBIs, and 18 runs scored. He's doubled tonight. He's turned into the leading candidate for American League Rookie of the Year, although Tristan Casas of the Red Sox is making a charge as well. One to Henderson. Right hander Westberg on deck. So the categories that Henderson leads this year. And Soriano ready in the bullpen. He would likely face Westberg. And it's a strike from Loop. He's on two fastballs, one just off the corner of that one at 93. Water Escobar is going to have to cover a lot of ground on that left side of the infield with Renhipo trying to keep Mullins close at second. Get a quick pitch on him. Check swing and he went around. That's strike two. So a loop after the double struck out Austin Hayes in a long at bat. He's ahead of Henderson one and two. Punched him out. That's in there. Strike three called. And I'm looking for something off speed. Got the express at 94. Well, it was all over the strike zone. Henderson didn't like the call. Brandon Hyde disagreed as well. Back to back strikeouts for Loop, and now he's going to stay in to face Westberg. Ground ball to short. Ranjifo has it. Strong throw in time. Aaron Loop works around the leadoff double and keeps the game tied. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. I'd say this calls for celebration. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. Oh my goodness! What a play! Every game. Go! 
every night. Swing and a miss. Every highlight that makes the headlines. Are you kidding me? We live today. Preview tomorrow. This race in the NL Central is getting good. On Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings. Only on MLB Network. The power of baseball goes beyond the field. Together, 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 together. MLB Big Inning brings you the biggest plays of the night, live as they happen. Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. It's nonstop action on MLB Big Inning, every night on MLB.tv. Support your Angels into the home stretch at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic jerseys, caps, t shirts, collectibles, and more. You're up with your Angels at MLBShop.com. It's the bottom of the eighth. This game is tied. Baltimore scored two in the third. The Angels finally answered with two in the seventh. And Mickey Moniak leads off the eighth inning against left hander Danny Kulon. Henderson is in at third, but he's off the line. First baseman Mountcastle is back in case Moniak thinks about a bunt here, which he has done before. Yes. He's always had those big swings late in games, late close. Opportunity to get on base or even give the Halos the lead here. Richick on deck, Jacob Webb, the former Angel, up in the bullpen. And there's a big swing from Moniak. That was a pitch right there to do some damage. Just a little above the strike zone, tough to make contact. Bring that down just a bit, and that's going to be crushed. One ball, one strike. Webb with the right hander Britchick on deck, then switch hitting Escobar and a lefty Cabbage, then another lefty with Shawnawell. So let's see if Brandon Hyde wants to go to Webb to face Britchick and Escobar. It's right in there, and it's two and two. Fly ball to left center field. McKenna moves over. He was frustrated on that one. He felt he had a pitch to do damage to, and that was right down the heart. Just popped it up. So one out now. Jacob Webb will be brought into this game by Brandon Hyde. This is Mookie Betts. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network. Imagine an entire channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen. And it's gone! With live look-ins to clutch at bats. A walk-off flare! And players on the edge of making history. This could be it! 62! It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike Zone. Wednesdays and Fridays, all season long. Listen to live Black Eyed Free audio from every major league club. And Aaron Judge with some thump. Stream video of minor league games. That's a go ahead grand slam. And watch the best baseball highlights and look ins on MLB Big Inning. 
The all-new At Bat is your all-in-one live baseball subscription for only $3.99 per month. There she goes. Home run, Pete Alonso. Subscribe to At Bat with On Valley Sports brought to you by Morongo. By Metro Water District for water saving tips and rebates, visit BeWaterWise.com. By Pacifico, rich golden lager brewed for those who follow their own path. Pacifico, live life, anchors up. And by pitching decisions presented by Sage, official finance software partner of Major League Baseball. The Big A, out by the Big Hats. Here at Angel Stadium, and it's a two to two game here in the eighth inning. Jacob Webb had spent some time here at Angel Stadium this season, and even in his life, grew up an Angels fan. Of Riverside, California. Webb facing his former team here. Randall Gritchick on the first pitch hits a bouncer to Gunnar Henderson for the second out of the inning. Webb throws a lot of first pitch fastballs and Gritchick hits first pitches pretty well but get the ground ball right to Henderson. Looks like Estevez will pitch the ninth inning against the bottom of the Baltimore order. Hicks, McKenna, and Mateo. The Orioles have already used Mullins as a pinch runner, so he can't bat for McKenna. Although Ryan O'Hearn can. We have not seen O'Hearn yet in this series. It's a lefty available off the Baltimore bench, and so is Adam Frazier. See if Brandon Hyde uses one of them or both in the top of the ninth inning as Escobar takes ball two. Good hitters count now for Escobar. And a big cut, two balls and a strike. Got a fastball in the inner half of the plate, the pitch he could hit out the right field. Possibility of a changeup now. That's line toward right, a base hit to the corner. Extra bases for Eduardo Escobar. That ball gets lodged under the right field wall, and Escobar will go all the way to third. The relay throw, not where anywhere near in time. He made it there. Now Escobar <laughs> dove a little short of the bag. And he's got a two-out triple. <laughs> <laughs> and that smile, you gotta love that smile. We spent he goes go three, go three. The slide this slightly in front of the base. <laughs> there it is. There it is. He got there. Like Willie Mays Hayes for a second. It's Fogo Power. Triple. <laughs> and a big bat from Luis Renipo. These two have really grown to perform well together here with Renipo. He owes so much to. Water Escar, we talked about that the other day, Wayne. You remember how much that's meant to him being around and talking with Escobar every day. And those two have been attached at the hip since Escobar came over from the Mets. Now Cabbage punts third base side, it's foul. Cabbage trying to throw a surprise party with two outs. Well, they kind of bunted that ball right into Escobar and Rutschman's path coming in toward each other. Yeah, you see how far away Henderson is. If he gets that anywhere near down the line, that's going to be a, an RBI single. Now Henderson in at third. Ball one to Cabbage, batting for the first time tonight. Cabbage had a big year at Triple A. Big swing there. One to, ball, two strikes. Yeah, he's throwing back to back changeups. Now, with that speed for Cabbage, just make it some contact, force him to make a play. Cabbage scored a walk off run earlier this year. A stop by Rutschman with the go-ahead run at third. And another change if they try to make a perfect change up through in the dirt. 
Hutchman did a nice job of keeping that in front. Otherwise, Halos have the lead. Two balls and two strikes on Trey Cabbage. Ground ball, base hit. In the right field, Escobar scores. The Angels have the lead. It's three to two. Cabbage found a patch in the outfield for a base hit and RBI. Oh, you've been waiting all year. Oh, say. yes, I have. <laughs> yes, Escobar scores the go ahead run after a triple. Another changeup stayed on that one. Trey Cabbage, the go-ahead base hit. The Angels have a one-run lead now. Shanawell looks at a strike, and it's the former Angel, Jacob Webb, who has given it up here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Back-to-back two-out hits. Escobar tripling, and then Cabbage with the go-ahead knock. Ooh, good swing there. No balls, two strikes. What a great play, Shana. too. <laughs> Kid caught it. Wow. Kid caught it before it caught in. Cromwell was looking to do some damage on that. He was taking an extra base hit. He's had two hits tonight and a run scored. Angels with a late comeback against the Orioles. That's usually Baltimore's M.O. They are tied for the most comeback wins in the major leagues this year. All one to Shanawell. Cabbage stole 31 bases in the minor leagues this year, so he can be a threat to run. Two runs in the seventh, one in the eighth. The Angels now in front, and now Webb throws over. He's got good speed, Cabbage at first. If Shawnawell hits one to the alley, it's going to be able to get an extra run in. Estevez will be in search of his 30th save when he gets the ball in the top of the ninth. He's almost like a pitch, pitch out. out. Yeah, you don't see that at all anymore. So it's two balls, two strikes on Shawnawell. There's ball three, and Rutschman really concerned with Cabbage, who's getting some secondary leads, and now Cabbage will run anyway. They count three and two. Interesting outfield alignment. Hayes very shallow in left. McKenna a little closer in center, and then Hicks deeper in right. Hit to the right side, sliding stop by Westberg. Low throw to first, but Mountcastle has it. And the Orioles able to make a nice defensive play to end the inning, but the Angels have the lead. Trey Cabbage, the go-ahead base hit, and a comeback for the Angels now with the lead into the ninth. into one lightning fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings, only on MLB Network.
Desperate Hefo is, I am a believer also. The Halos come back here and have the lead here in the ninth inning. Trey Cabbage with the go-ahead RBI single after Eduardo Escobar triple. Two outs. Good job there, and Luis Verhebel with the smile. Reigning player of the week, and Carlos Estevez in the game now for the Halos to be able to pick up that save, potentially number 30 of the season. Angels with two runs in the seventh inning, one in the eighth. And a three to two lead as this game gets to the top of the ninth inning. Aaron Hicks is due to lead off. And it's McKenna and Mateo. Already Adam Frazier is in the on deck circle, so it looks like he'll bat for McKenna. Estevez will fade Hicks, will face Hicks after we hear from Land Rover. Angels bullpen so Ben Joyce made a rehab appearance tonight for Inland Empire as Estevez delivers a strike to Aaron Hicks Joyce getting to join his twin brother Zach on the Inland Empire roster for the time being there's a drive to left center field Moniak moving over for it he's there he makes the catch he almost flies out. First out, the ninth inning. So one away, Estevez trying for his 30th save in 32 tries. As Adam Frazier comes off the bench to bat for McKenna, and Ryan O'Hearn is in the on deck circle. So Brandon Hyde going to both of his available left handed batters here. And there's a strike from Estevez. Aaron Loop in line for the win. He did a good job in the eighth inning working around a leadoff double facing the middle of Baltimore's lineup. Frazier the fly ball toward the left field line. Long run. Renhefa moving over. Escobar can't reach it. It's a fair ball. And Frazier ends up at second base with a double. Wow, that baseball was just flared all the way. Escobar got the closest but couldn't quite reach it. Tried with the bare hand. See Grichuk kind of slowing down as Escobar had the best angle at it. Frazier has been that hitter throughout his career. A guy that's always going to make contact. Not necessarily the highest exit velocity off the bat, but found that outfield grass. Here's O'Hearn, who has hit the daylights out of the ball this year. He has hit 300. This is a guy the Royals decided they had no use for. And O'Hearn has come to Baltimore, and he's become a crusher against right-handed pitching. No balls and two strikes. Partially says the shift is a reason for it. Shift being eliminated. Hearn has never hit higher than 262 in a major league season. He's at 300 this year. And he lines one to left to base hit. That's going to tie the game. Adam Frazier scores, and it's a blown save for Estevez. Three to three. Going to stay on that fastball. Got more of the plate than he wanted to, right down the heart of the plate. And that flare by Adam Frazier, not a lot of contact on it, but found that outfield grass. So the two lefties off the Baltimore bench come through. Frazier with the bloop double right down the left field line, and now O'Hearn. It's right down the heart there, especially on an 0-2 count. Gotta be careful with Rutschman from the left side, especially as. He has tremendous power from this side of the plate. RBI single tonight. And he's walked twice and he's got the count in his favor here 2 and 0. Which the Orioles with the most. Come from behind wins the majors tied with the Reds Cincinnati had to come from behind win tonight against Seattle. The 
Reds getting their 10th walk-off win this year. And beating the Mariners at Great American Ballpark tonight. They're a very, very patient hitter, but a guy with a lot of power, too. Not Chase. That's been so far, but now you might see him expand here on a 3 1 count. See if you can get a ground ball and an infielder for a double play if you're Carlos Estevez. Watchman fouled it off his foot. Now it's three and two. Angels worked hard to come back and get a lead. As soon as they get it, they give it up. Estevez allowing back to back hits here in the ninth inning. Runner going, and there's ball four to Rutschman. So three straight Orioles have reached. And Rutschman has walked for the third time in this game. Matt Wise heads to the mound. And Ryan Mountcastle do up. Meeting on the mound here, so the home plate umpire Lance Barrett goes out to break it up. Mountcastle with two hits in this game. He's got O'Hearn at second base, the go ahead run, and Rutschman at first. Cedric Mullins is on deck. Remember, he was a pinch runner for Santander in the eighth inning. Mullins, a very capable batter himself, staying in as the DH. Possibility to think about with Mountcastle is the double play ball. He's hit into 11 this year. So go back to that 0 2 pitch. No, too much of his own for Carlos Estevez. And now all of a sudden he's having a tough time throwing strikes. Good pitch there, though. It's one of those pitches you're going to get a ground ball double play on because it's off the plate in. Grounded into right field, a base hit. Drury never saw it off the bat. Seemed he was shielded by the umpire. And either way, O'Hearn scores the go-ahead run. And the Orioles are up four to three. You know, off the bat, you're thinking maybe you have a shot at a double play. He's getting in a position to be able to get that ground ball. They didn't even see it at all. Been a tough play for Drury, but it was possible that he could have gotten there. It was hit hard by Mountcastle, but Drury never saw it. Locked by Ryan Wills, the second base umpire, at least from the vision standpoint. And the Orioles have the lead. This inning started after Hicks flied out with a bloop double. Two, three, four in the lineup. The Angels, the bottom of the ninth. He's trying to keep at a one run deficit now. Mullins serves one towards shallow left. Richard got a good jump coming in, makes the catch. And the Orioles will hold Rutschman at third. So 
Mullins flies out. That's the second out of the inning. Now looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. Drury, Renhifo, and Mustakas do up. The Orioles have a couple of pitchers up in their bullpen. Can't tell if one of them is Yenier Cano or not. Neither one is Cano. D.L. Hall is the lefty. And Joey Crable is the right hander. So apparently Cano not available for Baltimore. Austin Hayes is one for four tonight. And he swings and misses to end the inning. But Carlos Estevez gives up two. And the Angels will have their two, three, and four batters due up to try to get it back in the bottom of the ninth. Loco. Bueno, hay que, hay que conmemorar la vaina, ¿no? Una corona que no la mete. Ay, ay, ay. Me debe una. No, me ha la ciudad. Una ciudad así tan bonita, ¿no? Wow. Como el, el estadio allá, ¿sabes? Pues para la segunda, oh. la segunda casa. Dame tu secreto de la vida más que. Yo me disfruto lo más que yo pueda de mi vida. Salud. <risa> la vida más vida. Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort, and it all starts right here with MLB Tonight's first pitch. Let's go to the ballpark. It's a good chance to look around a little bit. A match between the best teams in the National League going head to head. During the games, we take you to the games where you might see a live walk off. Yes! And after the games, we want to hear from the players as bad as you do. First career walk off hit. How did that one feel? Oh, man, it's, it's as good as it gets. And that's how this team covers every team on MLB Tonight. Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort. From the first pitch. Let's go to the ballpark. To live look-ins. And post-game reactions. Tell us how this one feels. That's how this team covers every team on MLB Tonight. Castle, one that maybe Brandon Drury gets to if he could see it, but he couldn't because Ryan Wills, second base umpire, was standing in his way, and Carlos Estevez, about as angry as we've seen him this year, after a blown save in the top of the ninth inning, giving the Orioles the lead. And D.L. Hall will be the pitcher for Baltimore, at least to begin the bottom of the ninth. They had Joey Crable up as well, but it will be Hall to face Drury, Renhifo, and Mustakis. And Adroy has been really solid. Big double last at bat. Stockus also an RBI hit. So Renhifo has been red hot. Player of the week. So you got the guys up here you need to have up here to be able to come back and win this game or very least tie it. The Orioles have moved their whole infield around and the outfield too. Aaron Hicks moves over to center field. Ryan O'Hearn stays in the game to play right field. Jordan Westberg has gone to third base. Henderson has moved to short. And Adam Frazier stays in to play second base. Drury with a pop up. This is Frazier calling for it to make the catch. One out. D.L. Hall has one major league save in just 17 big league appearances. As he floats in a strike. It was at Yankee Stadium last year, at the very end of the season. Also got his first big league win about a week after that last year. Drive to left center from Renhifo. This ball is pretty deep, and that ball is off the wall. 
Boy, he continues to crush the baseball everywhere in the stadium. Two more hits today for Luis Renjifo in scoring position for Moose. A one out double. The rally hats are working so far. Boy, what a shot that was. It's a changeup. He hit that far and hard off the bat. So Renifo in scoring position. Amustakis, who had an RBI's last time, steps up. Crable is up again in the Orioles' bullpen. Logan Ohapi on deck as Mustakis swings through the first pitch. Good speed with Renhefo, a little flare into the outfield will tie it up. Ball one to Mustakis, one for four tonight with that RBI single. There's ball two. Let's see, pitches away from lefties lately for Mustakas. He's done a nice job of going the other way with the pitch. Tying run at second in the bottom of the ninth. There's a strike to make it even. Two balls, two strikes on Mustakas. The Orioles took the lead with two runs in the top of the inning. Angels fought back in the later innings as well. It's turned into a back and forth game here at Angel Stadium. On two and two, Mustakas rifles one foul. A couple sliders in a row that Hall has not thrown exactly the right spot. Mustakas is out in front of that one. The one before was part of the plate. Logan Ohapi is on deck. The Orioles have used six pitchers already tonight. Got one warming up in the bullpen. Another foul from Moustakis. up Mountcastle makes the catch and there's two down Angels live post game is next brought to you by OC Navigator break down the finish here the Angels scoring two in the seventh one in the eighth to take the lead Carlos Estevez allowed two in the top of the ninth now the Angels trying to rally again with the tying run at second base and Logan Ohapi who's hit the ball hard tonight. Yeah, he's got the power to walk this off, especially if he pulls in the left field. Against the lefty DL Hall, and time is called. Pitch timer violation will put the count quickly in Ohapi's favor. He a good speed at second. The outfield pretty deep. Now two balls, no strikes on Ohapi. Mickey Moniak do up next. I think they're, they're not going to give him anything to hit here, to be honest with you, Wayne. Rutschman keeps looking in there, Brandon Hyde, and it's one of those things where they try to see if they get him out on something out of the zone, but then when so, that's when you make mistakes. Rutschman really setting up a way. And that's not close, so that's ball three. And the this Orioles seem, might as well just go ahead and put them on. And they seem much more interested in going lefty lefty against Moniak. You know what? Make that mistake right here. You got to be ready if you're a hoppy. 3 0 swing. Ooh, he got a lot of the plate and it caught a ball. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was right down the middle. This is, you know, he's trying to go way off the place. See, that's what I'm talking about when you're just not trying to throw a strike. That was right down the heart. A 
Uh, Chris Holt will march to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 right down the middle. That happens, I guess. Lance Barrett was out to lunch for a moment, but now Chris Holt, the Orioles pitching coach, heads to the mound. Chris Holt. He'll face Mickey Moniak here in the bottom of the ninth. At least DL Hall will. Moniak one for four with a single. We've talked about his improvement against left handed pitchers. Some of those late close hit 333 this season. The nine RBIs. Tying run at second base when he fell. Hoppy runs well for a catcher at first. He's the winning run. Moniak had a good cut at that one, fouled it off. Had a pretty good pitch to hit also. Had a flat slider. Another good cut, but another foul. And now the count in Hall's favor. It's no balls, two strikes. Tying and winning runs are on in the bottom of the ninth. Both teams have had late inning comebacks. The Angels hoping for one more. And Ifo at second, Ohapi at first. A one run game. And Moniak takes ball one. Rushman keeps that in front. That way you wouldn't have two runners in scoring position. Moniak had a base hit earlier. He's one for four. Base hit here would at least tie the game. The one two. Right up the middle. It's a base hit in the center field. Ready for around third. The game is tied again. Mickey Moniak at all. Single, it's four to four. Boy, Mr. Layton close again. Mickey Moniak. Moniak is so fine with that line drive. His bullpen yet again. This is such a big game for Baltimore. They are doing everything they can to try to win it. And they will go to their seventh pitcher tonight to try to get out of the bottom of the ninth. The game now tied. MLB Big Inning brings you the biggest plays of the night live as they happen. Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. It's nonstop action on MLB Big Inning every night on MLB.tv. It's like A double off the wall in left center field. With two outs, Mickey Moniak knocked one up the middle past a diving gunner Henderson to score Renifo. Now it is even again, four to four. And it's gotten 
pretty fresh here in the last few innings. These two teams in a battle to the finish line. Some pretty clutch hits on both sides here late. We saw a tweet from one of the Rays announcers, Mickey Moniak, with five exclamation points. Yeah. They are watching in Tampa Bay tonight as Randall Gritchick comes up with the winning run at second. If the Orioles don't hang on, Tampa Bay will gain a game in the AL East. The Rays will be just two and a half back. Ball two to Randall Gritchick with the winning run. Ohapi at second base. I mentioned it earlier, but Ohapi does have pretty good speed for a catcher. And two pitches way out of the strike zone so far against Gritchick. Joey Crable against Gritchick. A high pop up. Frazier is out. O'Hearn is in, and it's Frazier with the catch. To send this game to extra innings, Mickey Moniak delivered the game tying hit, a two out RBI single to make it four to four. Covering a full night of baseball is a team effort, and it all starts right here with Harold and Adnan on MLB Tonight's first pitch. Who's ready for baseball? It's time for the first pitch. We're about 25 minutes from game time. I'm so excited. Our quick hitters right out of the gates. During the games, we take you to the games where you might see a lot. Greg, Greg, we have a potential walk-off at Wrigley. <sighs> no way. What's going on? Oh, they've got a runner at third, and Nico Horner's up. Here's a pitch. Base hit. Nico. Cubs win! Cubs win! Cubs win! And after the games, we're all about instant highlights and player reactions. Nico, congratulations. Your first career walk-off hit. How did that one feel? Oh, man, it's, it's as good as it gets. An amazing crowd here tonight. Uh, Wrigley Field is a, is a very special place. We're feeling good right now, for sure. And that's how this team covers every team. All in a night's work on MLB Tonight. Team roaring back in the final innings tonight. He had his hand in it in the bottom of the ninth. Doubling to get on base, scoring the tying run. A base hit by Mickey Modiak, and this game is even into extra innings now. Four to four in the top of the tenth. Soriano on the mound now. That power arm he has. The base runner start at second base. Got that strikeout capability. You need that kind of arm, especially when you have that runner starting in second base with no outs. Austin Hayes will be the zombie runner at second base. One of our friends from NH NHK said he preferred zombie runners, so I'm going to go with that yeah, for him. It's fine with me. Gunnar Henderson is one for four with a double. He has struck out a couple of times. Hayes at second, the automatic go ahead run. There's a curveball from Soriano for strike one. A ball, one strike. Finale of this series will be tomorrow night. Patrick Sandoval pitching for the Angels. He'll face Kyle Gibson, who has 13 wins, but an ERA over five. That's a good, good, sharp curveball. The Angels have had some pretty good success against Gibson, so you just want to be able to win, find a way to win this game and win a series.
Turned Angels are that one there. Angels are six and six in extra inning games this year. The Orioles are nine and six. Anderson able to slap that one foul and stay alive. That got a little bit more of the plate and elevated enough where you can make a good pass at that curveball. Orioles have used most of their bullpen. And one guy they haven't used is Shintaro Fujinami, and he might be the one up in their bullpen right now. Yeah, it is Fujinami. We saw him earlier this year with Oakland. Chopper to Drury. That does move the runner over. I hope that's a productive battle. Get some high fives over there in the dugout for getting the job done, advancing the base runner. Although you're looking for a hit, you're looking for multiple runs in an extra inning game, especially as the road team. Infield in now. So one out in the batter, Westberg. Bounce to the left side. This will score the run. Renhifo goes to first for the out, but Hayes scores on the soft bouncing ball from Westberg. And the Orioles go back in front. It's five to four. That's a good decision by Renhifo. You're not going to have a play at the plate. You got to get that out. You got to assume you can score one run as the home team with the runner starting at second, no outs. It's a good read, too, by Hayes. Good secondary lead. He's going no chance at all of the play. This is really where that extra inning runner at second base can be frustrating because Jose Soriano has gotten both of the batters he has faced to ground out, and yet the Orioles have scored a run in this yeah, inning. Yeah, softly ground out twice. This year, road teams have won 52% of the time. You almost feel like that this sort of situation the system that's in place kind of favors the road team well, the home team has the last at bat the road team kind of gets to set the standard by going first with that man at second base the road team has won much more than the home team has this year you got Gritchick will be at second base under Esquire who's hit the ball well today a chance to Tie that game up or give the Angels the walk off. Aaron Hicks, the batter with a count, one ball, two strikes. It's a ground ball to second. So Jose Soriano gets three ground ball outs against three batters, and yet he gives up the go ahead run. It's 5 4 Baltimore. and coverage all day every day your way on MLB Network channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen and it's gone. with live lookings to clutch at bats A walk -off slam. and players on the edge of making history this could be it 62 it's the best seat in the house at every ballpark all commercial free can you believe it mlb network strike zone wednesdays and fridays all season long Ineffective traded to the Orioles where they turned him into a full-time reliever. He made seven starts with Oakland. He really started pitching out of the bullpen for them too, but he had an eight and a half ERA for the A's. 
He's been better with Baltimore, not as wild. He walked 30 hitters in 49 innings for the A's. Still nine walks in 20 innings for the Orioles. Even Shohei Otani telling his teammates earlier in the year how wild Fujinami could be in Japan. He still has that firm fastball. His average fastball is at 98.4 miles per hour, and his splitter is just as firm at 92.8 miles per hour. So there's a cutter, a sweeper, slider, and a sinker. He's the eighth pitcher used by Brandon Hyde tonight. Really kind of started because Dean Kramer only went four and two thirds innings. Remember, Brandon Hyde pulled Kramer with the bases loaded and two out in the fifth inning. And that has started a, a deluge of relievers here as Baltimore's emptied their bullpen with the exception of their actual closer, Yenier Cano. He's the only reliever that hasn't been used. Cano has pitched in back to back games, so Brandon Hyde trying to stay away from him for a third straight day. Fujinami looks to second base with Grichik, the zombie runner, in scoring position. And there's ball one with a 99 mile an hour fastball to Escobar. Fujinami does have one major league save this year. Also six wild pitches. Escobar with a fly ball hit pretty well out towards center. Hicks is under it getting in position to throw. He's got a great arm trying to make it to third base. Gritchick and Hicks is throw just a little bit late as Gritchick advances 90 feet on the fly out from Escobar. Remember Aaron Hicks at one time until just a couple of days ago had the record for the hardest throw by an outfielder in the StatCast era. That was a lot closer than I thought it would be. That was pretty deep. Got a lot on that throw. Infield in now for Baltimore. Trey Cabbage had a game-tying RBI single, actually a go-ahead RBI single in the eighth inning. He had a vicious cut. It is in the eighth, a base hit that put the Angels on top for the first time tonight. The lead would disappear in the top of the ninth, but the Angels tied it up again. Now it's Baltimore with the lead in the bottom of the tenth. And it's 0 2 on Cabbage. That's a 100 mile an hour fastball there. A pretty Fujinami. good hack at the first fastball. Fujinami's one save came in Seattle August 13th in an extra inning game. He's trying to hold a one run lead here. The tying runs at third. Cabbage laid off that. It's one ball, two strikes. Shanowell on deck. Swing and a miss. Just ran another fastball. All four pitches at 100 miles an hour. It'd be harder to do that against Shanowell. He has two hits and a run scored tonight, but now just any out. We'll get the job done for the Orioles, who took the lead in the top of the tenth. On three ground outs, two ground outs to get the runners over. With that automatic runner at second base, Austin Hayes moved to third on a ground out and scored on a ground out. This will be an anguish loss for Jose Soriano. He retired all three batters that he faced, but gave up the go ahead run. The ball's two strikes on Shanowell. That's that splitter. 94 mile an hour splitter. By four, Baltimore in the tenth. A lot of runs scored late in this game. All but two came after the seventh inning began.
Shonowell couldn't hold up, and that's the ball game. Nasty split. Out of his own, gets a chase. Baltimore with three ground ball outs. Win the game. Oh, what a ridiculous way to, to have a ball game end. The Orioles never did anything in the top of the 10th, but they got the runner around. The Angels could not. And Ryan Mountcastle, who had three hits in an RBI, is the Toyota player of the game. As Baltimore wins in 10, they have won this series by taking the first two games. And they beat the Angels tonight 5-4. To for Mark Gubazon, Carlin Bathe, I'm Wayne Randazzo. As we say goodnight from Angels Stadium, the Angels fall in 10 innings to the Orioles 5-4. to four. Angels Live postgame is next.